The fifth round of the Polar GT Cup takes place here at Brands Hatch and unfortunately under a dark cloud. Less than 24 hours ago, Alan Simonson, 34 years of age, crashed into a safety barrier at the 24 hours of Le Mans, just barely 10 minutes into the race. And despite being immediately airlifted to hospital, was pronounced dead just a couple of hours later. This death has shocked not only the GT community, but the motor racing community around the world. And us here at Glacier TV wish to express our heartfelt condolences to Simonson's family. And this broadcast here today is dedicated to him. Now, as I say, the show will go on the fifth round of the Polar GT Cup here at Brands Hatch. We're going to kick it off right away with our track guide for this circuit set in Kent, England. Set a stone's throw away from the nation's capital, Brands Hatch in Kent is known as the UK's second track. Due to being situated in a natural amphitheatre, Brands has a ton of elevation changes in contrast to its sister track Silverstone, and the fast, narrow course often leads to tight and exciting racing. Events first occurred at the track in the 1920s and hosted 12 British Grand Prix between 1964 and 1986 at one point alternating year on year with Silverstone. Perhaps the most famous event at the track took place in 1985, when after 76 races Nigel Mansell finally won his first Grand Prix on home territory. The track also hosted IndyCar racing twice, in 1978 and in 2003 on the shorter layout. As the car comes past the start finish line, you notice immediately that you can't see the apex down into Paddock Hill Bend. You've got to be very late on the brakes here. Get yourself a good arc. You can use a little bit of that runoff area as well before the short run down into turn two of Druid's Bend. This is the slowest corner on the racetrack and also the best passing opportunity. You need to get yourself a good line out of here, bring the car back to the right-hand side before Graham Hill Bend, a 90-degree left-hander. You can use a lot of that runoff area on the exit of the corner before a short straightaway before you come down into Surtees turn number four. Now you need to make sure that you get yourself a very good run out of this corner because you need all of that momentum as you come down the back straightaway, Pilgrim's Drop. Now this straightaway, you can notice the elevation changes on it. You'll go downhill, then back uphill again on the second part of the straightaway before you come down into turn number five, Hawthorne's Bend. Now this is the first of three right-hand corners in the row. The thing is, each of them have very different characteristics. Out of five into six, Westville Bend, another 90 degree right-hander. This is actually a lot more difficult than turn five. That run off the left-hand side, very treacherous. A little kink to the right-hand side before you come down into turn seven. Sheen Curve. You've got to slow down a little bit more for this one. Get yourself a good run out of here. Bring the car back to the right-hand side before you take a left-hander into Sterling's Bend. Turn at number eight. Now you're back onto a straight. You'll notice on the right-hand side, the Indy layout will merge with this track at some point about now. And then you come down into turn number nine, Clark Curve. This is a long 90-degree right-hander, but you've got to make sure that you get onto the power because you need all of that momentum as you come back past the start-finish line. Brands Hatch is a short track, and these drivers will be ticking off laps like there's no tomorrow. It's important, however, to maintain momentum throughout the entire race, because one mistake, and their race could be over. This has been the Brands Hatch Track Guide on Glacier TV. Thank you for watching. So welcome back to this, the fifth round of the Polar GT $1,000 Cup here from Brands Hatch in England. Currently, the drivers are on their qualifying runs. We have about 25 drivers who's making the field here today. Right now, having a look at the qualifying times, actually, and it looks like that Norby Kisjoni is um, getting it done out front. It seems, it seems so, and uh, Norby has had the pace through that through the whole cup and uh, will be interesting to see if he's able to maintain that pace and I have no doubts that he, he will be but uh, there are uh, quite a different quite tracks quite different to mid-ohio and uh, brands hatch after this one like Phil starting from Philip Island so but uh, so far Norby is definitely doing the job his fastest time of the day in qualifying a 122.6 
uh, sorry, 0.568. That is just eight one thousandths of a slower second slower than what he did in his practice session. So Norby really on the limit here today. Currently, um, it's Keith for Volker Jr. also doing a good show. A 123.4 for him right now. So he's kind of off the pace as far as qualifying goes for the time being. Um, Dave Geelink doing a 123.085. You have to say that Geelink is a lot further back from Kiss and we've seen him so far in this season. Yeah, he is, but uh, might be uh, might be up to the fact that uh, like a few guys from Inex Racing uh, who's, who are going to skip this week based on the fact that they don't own the content, uh, they don't own Brands Hatch uh, up to this date. So uh, that, that might be an issue when the, when the team has not given its full effort to uh, to make a setup. Naturally, you can't put a full full effort into it if people are lacking the quote content. But uh, yeah, that that might be one of the issues. But Gilling still still is a racer. I mean, even with the not so good, set, not so competitive setup, Gilling, Gilling has proved for it, like uh, with pretty much every car in the in the sim that uh, he can drive the car when it comes to race. Of course, Inex Racing still um, ecstatic over the back of their victory in the STC Blue Cup. One of the fastest GT teams in the service right now are Inex Racing. We expect to see probably Dave Gilling a little bit faster in um, race pace. I'll tell you what, having through the field as well, it's Pinalani Oto, Yanomata Kane, the Glacier TV boys, the Glacier Racing boys even, they're having a good job in qualifying um, and in practice. Um, Lani Oto was the fourth, fastest in his practice session, Yanomata Kane in sixth, and some good speed there from the Glacier Racing boys. Yeah, they, uh, I was just talking to him about five minutes till we, before we went on air and they said, uh, especially Yoni Hackner said that he found some tweaks in his setup which uh, instantly brought him 0.5 of a second on the track so it will be interesting to see what these guys can pull, over and pull up uh, during the race. So we have got ourselves on the play clock for qualifying a little over... Um, Five seconds before the checkered flag comes out. In fact, the checkered flags just are out. And you can see the point standings as they were before this race kicked off. They are up on the screen momentarily. Um, and Dave Geelink out front, the championship uh, leader, 902 points. Norby Kiss today, though, if his qualifying speed is anything to go by, he could retake that championship here today. Philip Hildeman in that third position. He's still got a good chance of making up ground. Enzo Benito, however, Yoni, back at mid-Ohio. His first race won, second race taken out on what you could blatantly call nothing more than an, an unaggravated incident. Absolutely, that was devastating for Enzo. That, that week could have possibly been one of the best uh, point scoring weeks uh, for him during the whole cup and that was basically destroyed by one ridiculous act by, uh, I don't want to even say who, who it was, but uh, especially if Enzo had the, has this as a drop week because he doesn't own the track, that's devastating for the mid-Ohio heat to zero points basically is gonna, is gonna cast a shadow on his championship run, but uh, back to like Norby Kiss, Dave Geeling, uh, we have to remember that even though if Norby takes a pole, uh, let Geeling is let's say second, third, fourth in a heat one, then it means that uh, Geeling is three, four positions ahead of Norby going into second heat and that can really pay off uh, at the end of the second heat, so uh, will be interesting to see then uh, after two heats how these guys are going to play it out. And I think that's the important thing as well. There are two heats. For those of you who are new to the Polar GT $1000 Cup, hello. Um, there are two heats. The first one of them will be run as standard. The guys qualify. They will line up on the grid. They will run for 30 minutes. The second of the two heats, however, that works by the drivers lining up. The top 20 will be in an inverted grid. And then they will have to race for 35 minutes. Differences in Heat 2, it's also a rolling start, which will make things like this track very interesting for the first couple of corners, Jamie, because um, Paddock Hill Band and Druids, they are two very difficult corners to start the lap off. Yeah, and if you, uh, if you especially if you take the first two corners of the Heat, even though it's a rolling start, uh, if people have a poor exit coming out of turn one, that really means that if you have a if you're being chased by a guy who takes an ultimate exit out of turn one, that can really, really cause a pileup at the turn two if they, if these guys are not cautious. They have, however, like uh, this is the second race in succession where the drivers have received a warning that uh, based on the um, first three rounds of the uh, of the uh, Polar GT Cup, that if these drivers make a stupid mistakes in lap one and cause a wreck, they will instantly get one race suspension. So I, I'm pretty sure we're going to see clean racing coming out of the first lap. 
a smaller field here today as well. That is going to make things very interesting for this inverted field because uh, this is no offence to the guys who are normally lower down the field. You normally have that 20 place buffer to kind of, you know, the guy who's starting 20th, finishing in 20th in Heat 1, therefore starting first position for Heat 2, normally still has some pretty good speed about him. And for a smaller field here today, that will make the charge a lot more interesting. There is a slight possibility. And I say slight, that let's presume that Norby Kiss is going to walk Heat 1. He could still probably get to the front in Heat 2, so he's got a good chance to make up a serious amount of points here today. The same would apply for Dave Geelink. Yeah, the top, uh, outside of uh, INX Racing Boys, uh, quite a, like, uh, I would say nearly everyone in the top 20 of championship standings have made their way to the Brands Hatch circuit. And uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting because e even if we, well, we have, what, what, 22 cars in total, 23? Which means basically that unless you're very uh, unfortunate and have a DNF with amongst the first three people, if you get a DNF and you finish in the P20, you're gonna get a pole for the second heat. So e even even if you would get a disastrous heat one, that's that doesn't mean a game over for heat two. And of course, Brands Hatch itself less pit boxes than other tracks, and this is one of the reasons why we have a smaller grid here today. We're gonna give you a full rundown of the grid in a couple of minutes time. Um, we talked about the two guys out front. For the guys in the mid-pack as well, Yanni, there are some good opportunities today to make up some serious points. We're pretty much at the halfway point of the season now. Still a lot to play for, but that mid-pack has been tight all season long. We've already seen that in the point standings. Absolutely, and not only the mid-pack, but so um, uh, also the top pack has been uh, has been very competitive, getting more competitive throughout uh, the the further we've gone in the cup, the further the more competitive the top uh, top-notch drivers have become. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, I still I, st I can still see see the uh, the picture of Enzo Bonito flying into the walls in, in my eyes in in, in mid Ohio. But out, without that, it, it would be even more close because Enzo would be right there amongst the top three. But uh, yeah, now that we have the um, uh, negative factors uh, cleared off, uh, we should shoot and should get um, a, a nice, nice and clean two heats today. We talked about it in the track guide as well. This is a very narrow track. You won't expect to see three wide here. Two wide is possible. Um, however, um, we've seen it before as well in the um, VRGT Championship, the German series that we run on Glacier TV, that these guys can go side by side pretty much the entire lap. So it is good for racing. Don't expect to see three, four wide that we've seen earlier on in the season, however. Um, so we so say we're just going to wait for a couple of minutes to get ourselves... Um, confirmation of the results um, which are just about to come through to us any moment now and we can confirm that Norby Kiss will be starting this race from pole position and then it will be Christian Zimslack starting in the second spot Rocco Barone actually managed to get himself up into third position relegating Dave Gingling down into fourth position and then Dom Duhan top five in qualifying for him that's kind of shake things up a little bit there. Now Gilling's got to work a, look, a lot more harder. But still, Rocco Baran and Christian Shimjak, good qualifying by them once again. We've seen before, however, Shimjak's very good at qualifying. Sometimes his race pace does suffer just a tiny bit. Yeah, and uh, not only his race pace does suffer, but his, uh, his uh, lack of luck in the races suffer, especially we see in the Interlagos, where he did almost a successful three wide pass into turn one, having uh, having someone touch uh, at his rear end coming out of turn one and made, made him spin. and lose uh, six or seven positions but yeah this is not interlagos this is even more twist and turny so uh Dimjak is gonna have his working out for him today and a total of 25 cars qualified Jenny. in some ways if you had 35 40 cars like you sometimes do that would have made traffic very difficult because this is a very quick lap as well um kiss is qualifying time a 122.568 even though there's a lot of straightaways here to be able to get through traffic um a smaller field in this instance actually probably will favor the drivers a little bit yeah definitely because now they uh now they know that if if there's a smaller grid like let's say 24 cars then they know they can basically can afford to take uh, a few more chances here and there so uh, uh and still not be in total dis like uh totally out of the equation if uh, uh in terms of these um yeah, like you have a DNF in heat one. Normally, it means that you're uh, the second heat will be just as devastating because you're going to be all the way back at the grid. However, if you be the fourth 
to get a DNF, it means a pole position for the next race. So, um, will be interesting uh, to see how these drivers approach this race. Indeed, yeah. Um, Xavier Volker Jr. will be starting this race from the 6th position. Enzo Benito will start it from the 7th spot. And then it is um, Chris Dameron Jr. in 8th, Andres Valencius in ninth, And then rounding out your top 10 will be Paul Ilbrink. All these times, of course, are subject to ratification and also any outstanding penalties as well. Some of these drivers might have to start from the rear of the field. Very quickly, going to have a chat with Glacier Racing's Jana Matakean. Um, Jana, it looks as though you found a little bit more speed in the last part of the practice session here today. Qualified in the mid-pack for heat number one. Mm, yeah, I was, I was doing a 123.8 in a... Uh, close at practice, so this it, it was not best lap, but it was okay lap. Okay, Lap, you actually um, finished in qualifying ahead of your teammate, um, Tapano Laniota, as well. You two going to try and work together a little bit at the start of this race, try and move yourselves up through the field? Mm, I think, yeah. Trying to tr drive a clean race and maybe get. Mm. Top five, top top ten position at the end. Well, good luck in this race. Don't forget, you can head over to GlaciaTV.com and watch Yana Matakane's on board stream, as long as he stays in the race, at least. Um, so we'll talk to Yano a little bit later on. Um, so we're going to go racing very soon, actually, here for heat number one, getting ourselves set down and ready to go to heat. The first one of them, that will be a 30-minute standing start race. Standing start at Brands Hatch, always incredibly fun for these drivers to see. We'll be getting ready to do that in just a couple of minutes' time. Yoni, who's your pick for heat one? Uh, I probably have to go for Norby Kiss, uh, just because of his, uh, his qualifying performance. Not that far from Christian Zunzak, but... Uh, We've seen uh, so far in the, in, in the cup that he, he is able to keep a pretty good pace, uh, like despite all the um, he, despite all the trouble he's faced so far in, during the cup. But he he does have the race pace as well. And you talk about Shibazak. Like, hopefully he will get himself a nice clean start to this race. If he can get in front, and don't forget you can work that outside line down into um, Paddock Hill Bend. He'll have to get a very good start, however, and then he'll be on the outside into Druids. If he can hold it all the way through there, get himself still too wide on the exit of the corner, there is a chance, because the next two corners are left-handers, that actually he'll be able to get himself to the front of this race. He'll need a very good start, however, um, and the way this grid works, it really does negate um, the advantage for the car starting on the inside, because after the first two right-handers, which are at speed, they feel very bunched together. The next two critical corners, turn three, Graham Hill Ben and turn four thirties. They are left hand corners. You need to have that good momentum out of turn four, as we said in the track guide, to work yourself down that back straight away. Um, and this is going to be a very fast paced race as well here. Yoni. I don't think we're going to see what we've seen so often of drives just pulling away second after second because that draft is very prevalent on at least three sections of the racetrack. Definitely, and I'm not sure about the drafting effect with these cars. Uh, some of the drivers might actually run a very low wing setting, from what I heard from uh, the um, during the pre-race practice that the my, at least the Glacier Racing fellows were doing. So, uh, low wing setting in a, such a twist and turning track uh, against some people who might run a higher wing setting that can can uh, prove out to be quite uh, advantageous coming into the, along the infield straightaway, especially since it's a down downhill most of the way during this raid. So, we'd like to welcome you once again to the fifth round of the Polar GT $1,000 Cup here from Brands Hatch. Track measures 2.3 miles in length, nine corners, each of them as difficult as the other. Guys currently on a 10-minute warm-up. Norby Kiss and Yoni Hagen are coming together in practice there. Norby Kiss is looking down to the inside into turn five. His car just clipped the curb a little bit and bounced off the racetrack. And this is that narrowness we were talking about there, Yoni. This is very, very narrow, this racetrack. You've got to be careful when working through traffic. Absolutely. And uh, not only the guys uh, behind the wheel have to be cautious, uh, while getting past the traffic, but you also have to have some sort of a, like cooperation from the lap traffic. If they're in a fight of their own, 
that can be uh, can provide you can easily lose like one, two, maybe three seconds per lap if if you if you get stuck behind a battling duo or something. So live pictures now up on your screen. A little under five minutes until we go to the grid for the first of today's heat. And I, I think I have to say as well, you did make that a good point of how normally it's you know guys are fighting for that twentieth position. Today, due to attrition, some guy might be starting on pole position, and um, just because of the fact that you know the attrition means that they'll be in the top twenty. Um, the drivers here today, I think they're going to have to take the show to look a little more different to what they do normally. Smaller field, very small track. We talk about patience. I think today, Yoni, patience is going to be critical as Rocco Barone actually goes to the top of the timesheet and the fastest time that we have seen all day long, a 123.484. Yep. Uh, we, didn't, we didn't see, uh, I mean, Rocco is a third on the grid, but... Uh... It'll be interesting to see what these guys really can pull off in a, in a race. Some of these guys might have a less, like a, I'm pretty sure Rocco didn't have, didn't get as, as much practice uh, under his belt as he would have preferred to. So uh, yeah, he, he was actually scored a faster time than Norbik did in pole. So uh, this is gonna be fun to watch. It will be indeed. So Rocco Barone would say he'll be starting within the top five for this race in that number one machine. He really could put on a good show with Norbik Kisti today. And that's the thing as well, you know, this track, it does normally lead itself to good racing. I'm going to look right now at Norbert Kiss. He's trying to try and slow it down the inside of the number 70 car as he comes down into turn number one. That is Anthony Rosselli in the Radical Steel Suits car. I still need to get used to their new paint scheme, actually. But um, I think, I honestly think, like, this is going to be one of the more exciting Heat 1s we've seen all season long. Yeah, it wouldn't be a bad, bad thing because uh, uh, plenty of times, like... Uh like in, in a common a common sense says that uh, if you're if you base the field uh, sort the field based on qualifying times, you will have the fastest guys in front, slowest at the back. So naturally, uh, there won't be that many big mistakes or uh, big upsets during he the first heat. But that's what the heat two is for. But yeah, like you said, this is this has all the ingredients for uh, for an awesome race. I'd also like to send our condolences to the family of Simon Roberts who lost their 16 month old daughter this past Monday. I know all the guys from Talk Freak Racing absolutely devastated by this loss and Simon we wish you all the best as well as you try to rebuild your family after what is a tragic, tragic circumstance for you. Um, I haven't looked at the time, it's changing all of the time. Britain Shim's actually now going fastest in this practice session. Um, I think Yoni that this is the fact that this track it's very easy to put a foot wrong but if you can get it together then you can do some very fast lap times i think in qualifying jim jack barone perhaps they try to put their banker lap in which is what they have as their timed lap and then when they try to go faster they just couldn't do it but now we have two cars three cars now even because david volker jr is um, in third place he's faster than what we see in qualifying we don't ever see this yeah, but you have to remember that in qualifying, you are not allowed to cross the uh, the so-called off-track zones that much uh, because it will invalidate your qualifying lap. But uh, in, in in practice, in race pace, the off-tracks doesn't mean squat. So um, uh, might be a case, especially coming under turn three, which has the uh, the, the runoff area, which Rocco Brown is coming right now, by the way. So you're uh, actually working his way into turn one now. Uh, but now as he comes out of turn two, the hairpin, uh, turn three exit has that uh, very wi wide runoff area, which looks like grass, but that's one of those places where you can really, really get the maximum pace out of the corner with the price of one off track, as you can see right here. Yeah, we talked about that in the track guide as well. You really can use a lot of that runoff area, not like a little bit later on in a lap through turn six, especially. Well, it's very inviting to put two wheels in there, but it's very slippery for that section of the racetrack. Check the flag in the air. We're going to head ourselves down to the grid for the first of today's heat in the Polo GT $1,000 Cup. Let's give a very quick shout out, first of all, to igpmanager.com for prizes they have presented for this series. Also to our friends over at ETV and iRacing.com Motorsport Simulations as well. Let's run through your top 10 in the grid. Norby Kiss will be starting it from the pole position. A time of 122.568. Christian Simjak in the second position. A 122.674. Rocco Barone in the third position. Dave Gielink in fourth. 
Dom Duhan will be starting in the fifth position. Xavier Volker Jr. will be starting in sixth. Enzo Benito in seventh. Chris Dameron Jr. will be starting in eighth. Andres Valencius in ninth. And then Paul Ilbrink will round out your top ten. 25 guys starting the race here today. Martin Asher will be starting it from the 25th position here. We're just waiting for the cars to make themselves up onto the grid. Any moment now, the last of the cars will line up. And don't forget as well, here on Glacier TV, we're going to have ourselves a silent lap free on both heat number one and heat number two in memory of Alan Simonson, of course. For those of you just joining us, of course, you know by now he lost himself, his life at Le Mans less than 24 hours ago. Lights out. Here we go here now. Norby Kiss getting a good start. Shimchak getting himself a good start as well. The are that third position. going to look down to the inside as they come down into turn number one. However, he will force that Ferrari car down in the inside. Now, Shimchak will have the hope that he can slot into the third position. He's got a little bit of pressure from Dave Keelick in the fourth spot. They are all single fan as they work themselves out of turn number two for the first time. Two heard racing a little bit further back. You've got Dom Duham, Renzo Benito looking down the inside of him. Nothing happened there. You've also got right now Tano Lenioto. A good start. He's going to pass his teammate. Now trying to work on the number 70 car of Anthony Vassalli to come down into 30s for the first time. Will he get the job done? No, he won't. And Zabo Voluka Jr. goes down, started in P6 and already down to P10. Uh, lost four positions on the, on, on, at the start of the race and uh, obviously keeps losing more. While Yoni Hacker has a good run. <laughs> Almost has a good run, but decides against it in P16. He also is uh, one of the, uh, I think he made two positions at start in, uh, in lap one. So, very clean, a good, good and clean start from uh, the whole field, actually. I'll tell you who's made it up some positions. Andres Valencius, he started his race in ninth, making up some positions. Dom Duhan is where he started. Enzo Benito is on the charge right now. Guys losing positions. Chris Damian Jr. has lost a couple. Paul Ilbrink, he's kind of where he is, but Volker Jr. Start this race in the sixth position. He'll be down in about 11th position by the time this lap is completed. Leading the way, however, in Alex lap Hello. number 17. Hello, Matt Hackner on the charge. Hello, Matt Hackner going uh, 15 to 16th right now. Side by side almost on the main straight away. Alexi gets the spot. Uh, actually, Hackner is uh, going to pressure up Alexi into mistake in the inside line into turn one here. And he's not going to get the job done as Alexi is able to hold that inside line. Yoni Hackner tried going the long way around. Didn't get the job done into turn one. You'll have to try and see whether he can get a move perhaps out of 30 because there's a big traffic jam down there right now. Alexi Loma also trying to work on Yana Matikane as they come through Graham Hill Bend. Once again, working ourselves on lap number two of this race. Meanwhile, we're going to check in with your race leader, Norby Kiss. He's being able to pull out a little bit of a lead right now as he comes down into turn number five. And that gap ready to rock over the road. It's growing, Yoni. Yeah, but uh, we'll be, uh, let's go with one full lap uh, before uh, we get into conclusions about Baroni's pace because he had to get past Simzak. And, uh, but Simzak, uh, at least the opening lap was slow again because of Baroni uh, getting past Simzak. But uh, after one full lap will be a lot smarter. But Dave Geeling obviously is struggling with, he, he, did, he was not passed by anyone and uh, he's, he clearly doesn't have it, at least in the early stage of the race, he has nothing for these top three right now. So as we work ourselves onto lap number three, we're going to step aside. We'll be right back.
And as you complete lap number three here, of course, we are having a silent lap three on both races. To remember, Alan Simonson in this, the Polo GT $1,000 Cup. Two stories to report on. First of all, Paul Lillibrick was able to get himself past Chris Dameron Jr. But more importantly, Yone, Enzo Benito out of the race. And I'm not quite sure what happened there. He just got himself a little bit wide on the entry into 30. He pulled the car over and game over. Yeah, that's, uh, that's crushing because not only he's the first car to DNF, so that, that P20 uh, magic didn't happen for him. He's down at P25 and he will be starting the next heat from P25, so that's going to be devastating. Meanwhile, that gap between Norby Kiefer and is attacking right now. Stefani's attacking Anthony Rosdelli right now, gets the uh, move done. And Anthony must have had a horrible exit coming out of the turn four there. corner of the racetrack once again to complete what will be a lap number four for them. The gap between Norby Kiss and Rockaway is coming down as the Lamar Palumbo is going to go down the inside to come down into Paddock Hill Bend. Once again, Palumbo will get the job done if you just hold it on the racetrack and run a little bit wide, one very wide actually. This could allow Damon to translate down the inside into Druids once again. Will he get the line? Yes, he will. So you can just see there, Yoni, yeah, he was able to get the job done for Lambo. He went a little bit wide in turn number one. Chris Damon Jr. was right there back off. Absolutely, that's the that's the uh, mystique of, uh, of the turn one here. You can, it, it gives you a false sense of security going into there. Yeah, you, I can turn the car. But once the, once the star, car uh, actually falls underneath you because of the tra track makes a steep downhill during that cornering, all of a sudden you're, you're in trouble of uh, just avoiding the sand trap. And he managed to avoid the sand trap for the most part, but yeah, Chris Dameron got him right back. But speaking of the uh, the top two runners, uh, before this heat, the official race lap record was held by Zabba Buluka Jr. with the 123.560, and Norby Kiss only did a pathetic 0.178, so only four tenths uh, below the world record. And that's wow! So one of the guys goes very, very wide coming out of it. I think it's uh, uh, Zappa Kazu Jr. goes absolutely sideways coming out of turn seven there. A huge pile of smoke from his tires and loses um, two, three positions there in the process. But he's going to have greasy tires from the, the next few laps. And this is one of the things we actually saw in the Virtual GT series as well. You cannot put too much effort into these tires early. A lot of laps will be ticked off here. It's not like some tracks like Road America, for example. Very stop start. These corners flow from one into the other, especially in sector two of the racetrack, all the way from Hall Forge down into about Sterling's Bend, turn number eight. These drivers have got to be careful. You talk about lap times, however, and it does show that the guys here in Polo GT really are at the top of the game when it comes to sim racing. Roan, however, still closing that gap to the Robbie Kitts. Yeah, he's, uh, Barone is not giving up. Uh, 0.13 seconds, uh, he caught Kiss the last uh, last lap around. And, uh, actually, Christian Zimzak was one tenth faster than Barone was ahead of, him, ahead of him. So Zimzak is, time to get, after he gets those tires up to temperature, he's he's right up there to battle with the lead. This is an over yet for, uh, uh, for the top three, not to mention the, the mid-pack runners. Championship leader Dave Geeling is running in the fourth position. Dom Duhan still runs in fifth. But under pressure now from Andrew Salentius, who runs in the sixth position on the racetrack. Paul Lilbrink is running in seventh, and then you've got Chris Dameron Jr. in eighth, Mama Palumbo in ninth, and then Tapano Laniota has been able to work himself up into the top ten after starting this race in the 14th position. Just one retirement so far, and that is Enzo Benito. However, within about four laps, you're already going to see the lap traffic. Then McGee and Wolfgang Waterhall are already 50 seconds behind your race leader, Norby Kiss. Um, and right now, I'm actually just have a look through the field and actually I tell you what Valencius is getting very close to the of Tom Duhan now yeah the, the tracks, that track really seems to be uh, the, have the same magic that the mid Ohio had um, because it's uh, it's tr tight and tricky as uh, I think one of the yeah Paul Ilbrecht went very wide there uh, by the way coming out of turn 12 he's still in the grass went super wide in the entry of turn 4 must have caught the grass there just slightly under the brakes Drops from P7 to P14. 
not exactly the, the radical way for the radicals, but yeah. Uh, it used to be like plenty of the drivers uh, have a um, tendency of being able to push one super lap and then the next lap is like half a second slower because they are unable to repeat those uh, aggressive attacks on the corners. But by the way, Zimzak is half a second uh, faster than Baroni that last lap around and now he's really heating up in the top two. So it's going to be a three-way battle for your race lead between the number 17 machine of Norby Kiss and the number one car of Rocco Barone and then the number 34 car of Christian Zimtrak. They are your top three and as they come past the track like last time by, they were separated by less than 1.5 seconds on the racetrack as working on board of that 34 car of Christian Zimtrak as he comes down into Druids once again working on lap number eight. We have 11 minutes of this race scored complete and you have to say for Zimtrak right now, if he can get past Barone quickly, then I think he'll have a chance to win. The issue is, however, he's got to find a way past that one car. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And if uh, if Baroni has a low wing setting, that's going to be a tough, to, tough job to do because then he has to. Uh, the only option is to pass him uh, in the tight and twisty section instead of the, the long straights, uh, which is very possible, especially around here because of the the corners are extremely difficult. Even the slightest touch uh, on the curbs, or uh, if you don't touch the curb when you're supposed to touch it. Uh, it, it really upsets your car and uh, you really are, are in danger of losing the three four tenths of a lap which is needed for a, a guy chasing close to you to get, get that overtaking done. The important thing as well is that if Barone has to start defending this will allow Norby Kiss to dance off into the sunset and just a little bit. Dameron Jr. and Palomba too wide coming out of turn six and seven this is good stuff right here Palomba actually makes the pass six oh, Dameron, oh, oh. Dameron goes into the grass and Tapani really knows it says thank you very much and Dameron loses what? Uh, three positions in two corners? Yeah, there was the tiniest, the tiniest bit of contact there between Palumbo, who was all the way down on that inside curve, and Dameron Jr. I just missed Dameron Jr. out wide. Lost himself three positions there. He lost one, of course, to Palumbo, but also to Tupano Laniota and Anthony Rosselli. And then Super Alexi came on the outside of him trying to make the move as he came past the stripe. Wasn't able to do it, however, in that Trellet.net car. Um, and it does look as though I have to say Norbert Kiss is now starting to pull away, but this battle in the mid-pack will continue. And right now you've got Tupano Lanioto all over the rear of Mama Palumbo in that battle for 7th and 8th position. Lanioto is on a charge right now. Yeah, this Armando train going on here. It's at, at least 6-7 cars behind Armando Palumbo after after the fact that Armando had to go two wide for three, uh, two and a half oh, corners. Oh, trouble! With... Yano, Yano there, just, I don't know what it was. I think he got onto the grass. And you had the car ahead of him, which is Xavier Volker Jr. getting a very bad exit out of Graham Hill Bend and right. moved himself to the left-hand side of the racetrack. Yana Matikeyan just slammed into the rear of him there. Nowhere for him to go. I'm not sure how much damage there is in Yano's car. And there's also another car is off the track there as well. Yeah, so Enzo Bonito is uh, out of the race, but also it looks like um, the car of Chris Cameron Jr. is out of the race. So I'm going to try to get a get a uh, proper replay of both of these guys in one go here. Let's, yeah. uh, let's have a try. He was the exit of 30, turn number four on the racetrack. Chris Dunham Jr. in that 60 car, just, he didn't even catch the curb, but that car just drifted to the left then, and he just speared it into that inside retaining wall. Um, it almost looks there, you know, like he lost steering. Yeah, it's tough to see, uh, tough to say what, what went on there, but... Uh, uh, I'm not going to make any uh, commentator speculations, uh, I, uh, I'm infamous of those, so uh, I'll just <laughs> leave the speculation to you too, but let's have a look at the, what happened to Enzo Bonito first. So we're going to have a look, see what happened to Enzo Bonito first, and say, this is down into Surti's corner, um, this was very early on into the race, and for Bonito, in fact, both these incidents very weird, for Bonito, it does look as though he, I don't know, he just went wide a little bit, and then pretty much just parked the car, I'm not sure if he had any form of issues to his race car at all. We'll try and find out after this race from Timo Evening, um, who's the team manager for INX Racing. Um, weird for him and also weird um, for what happened to Daniel Jr. But meanwhile, all of a sudden, Shrimshack falling off the rear of Rocco Barone and Rocco Barone falling off the rear of Norby Kiss. You talked about this a little bit earlier on, Yoni. These guys are very good at doing one, maybe two really hard laps. But then after that, I don't know if it's the tyres that get too hot very quickly or what in the dirty air, you just fall back and now Rocco Barone's 1.4 seconds behind Norby Kiss and Christian Simjak's a further 1.2 seconds back. 
Yeah, especially if you if your setup is very loose, it it gives you a, a, a pretty good um, maneuverability through the corners, but it's it still has the the um, problem of if you just over to over car, drive the car like inch too much, it, it heats up the tires, and once the tires heat up in the under the loose setup car. Uh, it really keeps the car loose all the way until you really have to slow down or ease off from the throttle on the exits to, to get the tires cooled down again uh, to optimal temperatures. Uh, and uh, it, that seems to be the case with uh, quite, a, quite a variety of the drivers uh, in the field today. Um, they, seem, they definitely seem to be struggling uh, to make uh, consistent lap times. It's better, like starting from the leaders, leaders are doing um, 0 0.8, 0 0.9 last lap round, but next lap round Norvikis might have 0 0.5 coming. Barone might do a 0.6, then all of a sudden they can do 124s. So it's getting more and more interesting in this race. I'll tell you that. We'd also like to welcome into Glacier TV booth Rob Carson, blatantly got in a London Middleton train, which is the reason why he is a little bit late here today. Norvikis, as he comes past the track, he does a 123.993 that last time by Rocco Barone. Let's see if he. No, he doesn't. He goes in further temp slower. And Christian Jimjack is actually now the fastest out of those three guys once again. So it keeps on ebbing and changing as the race progresses, Rob. Indeed. Uh, sorry for my lateness. The traffic on the M6 was terrible. I probably went past your house with. <laughs> Could have picked yeah, me up. I'm not actually, so I can't actually see what's going on. But uh, only McLaren's, it's all fun and games and how many accidents we had. We've not actually had any accidents at the start of this race. Something's gone wrong. Um, really? But Jana Matikane is now scored one lap down in that 18 car. That is probably due to the incident he had a little bit early on. He has got some front nose damage on that Glacier Racing number 18 machine. But we're past the halfway point now. And this is how your top 10 stands. Norby Kiss, last time by 123.993. He's your race leader by 1.5 seconds over Rocco Barone. He did a 124.081 last time by. Christian Chimtrak, last time 123.892, sitting in the third position, uh, two and a half seconds behind your race leader. Dave Geelink in at the fourth position, 124.4 last time by for him. Andres Valencius, 13 seconds back, 124.9 for him. Dom Duhan, a 125.0, he's sat in sixth position. Actually now, all over the room, Andres Valencius, after Valencius was able to get past him. Mamba Palumbo running in the seventh position, 124.7 for him last time by. Um, and then eighth is Tamara Lanioto, 124.6. Alexi Loma, a 124.4. And then Yoni Hagner, a 124.4 um, for him as well, last time past the stripe. Um, let's check in on this battle right now, actually, between um, Tamara Lanioto and Mamba Palumbo, because Lanioto has been very, very fast in this race, um, Rob, but he's just struggling right now to find a way past that Team GT number 76 car. Oh, sadly, this lovely Kent track is kind of narrow, so it's quite easy to make your car wide here. Um, there's only a few real good opportunities. He what he needs is a good run for this next section. He needs to get a good exit on this tight left-hander and head up the hill and try and do it. Try and stick up the inside in the draft on the, uh, the fast rights through Dingledale and all those lovely corners. And also, Dom Duhan in that sixth position, he's lost that top five finish for the time being to Andres Valencius, but Valencius is not able to pull away right now. And this is a fascinating battle between the owner of the fastest team in iRacing, they call themselves that anyway, <coughs> Sorry. of um, Team Redline, and Andres Valencius in that number nine car as they work themselves once again into turn number 17, curve now down left-hander into Sterling's Bend, turn number eight. Um, and Duhan right now really trying to close that gap back to Andreas Blanchius. Yeah, it looks like he's um, he's trying hard, isn't he? He's trying to get right back up in the in the game. I mean, being part of the you know self-proclaimed fastest sim racing team, he should already be passing. He should be leading the race by ten seconds. I'm only joking. They're good guys, really. Um, <laughs> and he's, I'm sure he's going to put uh, a lot of pressure on Andreas very shortly. But um, I think. You know, I thought the Brits would be showing a little bit better at this track, and it's not raining at Brand Sash. What's going on? I know. Always. Oh, the sun's out. <laughs> Meanwhile, Is Alexia it? Loma in a three way battle with Pano Laniota. He's caught up to that train, and Mambo Palumbo as well. And we know just how aggressive Super Alexi can be in that Chalit.net car. As they all run a little bit wider as they come out of Graham Hill Bend, down to 30s they come once again. And Alexi and Laniota, they are both struggling to make passes. And these are two guys who are normally very good at slowing it down the inside. One of the things with this track, however, Rob, we know it so, so well, 
the curves, especially here, down into Hawthorne, and then into turn six as well, Westfield Bend, they're high curves. You don't really think they're high curves on the inside, but they really will upset the balance on that race car. Yeah, they, they, they are big, and from the driver's eye view, they, as you say, they don't look big at all, but they play havoc with the suspension. It looks like behind these guys, Paul, Paul Ilbrink and Yoni Hagner are, are trying really hard to catch up to these guys as well. So this could be a five-way battle. Um, Paddock Hill Bend, uh, sorry, yeah. Paddock Hill Bend's a good place to try and make a move if you can get close enough, but that's about it. Potentially, if you're radical enough. Let's see whether Paul is indeed radical enough. He gets himself <laughs> a little bit squirrely, actually, there. Out of Clark Curb, turn number nine. He'll come past the start finish line once again. He's fallen back, so he'll now have to have a very good run. Hope, perhaps, that Hagner makes a mistake down into Paddock Hill Bend. Indeed, Hagner does actually go a little bit wide, but so does Ilbrink there. He'll try and look down to the inside. He won't get the job done this time by. Ahead of him, Alexi Lone, Tuan, Lenny Oto, and, and, and Palumbo. They are still where they are on the racetrack. And Dom Duhan as well, this last lap, he's fallen back a little bit. Showing just, and we saw this in um, Virtual GT as well, just how dirty air could really hurt the tyres in this track. Yeah, it's with it being so now, and it's a lot of it's really high speed as well. Um, a lot of people like look at Brands Hatch and think, oh, it's tight, twisting, technical. But these cars, some of these corners are, you know, are just a lift. So they're, they're putting the tyres through hell. And we know what the plan's like when it comes to overheating tyres, etc., etc. So maybe he's gone right. Oh, how long have I got left? Mm, is it worth it? You know, or right, I know where he's slow. Can I put the hammer down in a couple of laps time and try and take the spot? So we've got ourselves a little under 10 minutes left to go, and I have to say um, that Norby Kiss has now been able to pull away, Germany particularly, from Rock Over Road. And that gap is now up to 2.3 seconds on the racetrack. But Christian Jimdrak, right, he's still right there. He's been able to close that gap once again. He did this before, Rob, able to get himself to within half a second off the road, but then fell back by about a second and a half. So let's hope this time that Shimjack can find a way through this dirty air. And of course, after 25 minutes almost of running these cars on this racetrack, these tyres are really going to be hot by now. Exactly, but Shimjack races, you know, for um, full-scale cars. So, of all of all the people, he's, his tyre management should be good. You know, he's he helps uh, whoever the setups, etc., etc., as well. So he's got a wealth of knowledge. So, let's see how he gets on there. Uh, that knowledge into uh, fruition. Indeed, um, and I'm, I'm intrigued because this will be Christian Schimmelzak's third top five finish off the cup and he's really looking to have a good second half of the season here, try and climb himself up a couple of spots in the standings. It does look as though he does struggle in dirty air however. Rocket Brain is able to pull out a good couple of attempts that last lap as Norby Kiss continues to dance away into the sunset in that number 17 car. And let's think about this, I mean these guys very fast at the start of the race. They did what some of the fastest race lap you've ever seen at this racetrack. Already, they're eight tenths of a second um, slower on a very short lap than Oof, what we were doing Shimshet about 20 really minutes wide. ago. Yeah, Shimshet just went really wide, uh, going through Paddock Hill, so made that slight mistake. If Glacier TV do a cut, please don't pick the MX-5 because this man would dominate. <laughs> he would indeed. He would absolutely dominate. But let's turn our attention back to what I was just saying. Behave. Um, Sorry. And these guys, you know, they're running, you know, anywhere between about seven tenths and a full second off what they were doing at the start of this race. It does show just how those tyres fall away. And for some guys, it's a lot more than others. And this track is all about managing your tyres more than anything. It's great to go very fast at the start of the race. If you can't make up the positions, however, you're stuck because you're taking too much out of your tyres. You're still behind the guy in front, and there's nothing you can do. Is it Alexia Loma? Trying to look down to the inside. Will he get that job done? He will. He's got it done. He's past the panel Lenny Oto. So now, can Super Alexi find a way past Mambo Palumbo, do you think? I would not put money against it. <laughs> and um, we've got Hagner too wide with it. Oh, the Zilbring goes round the outside. Good move. It does indeed. And um, Hagner and, and, and Ilbring, they've been fighting for a number of laps now. And Paul Ilbring's been able to get that job done on Yoni Hagner. Let's see whether he can close up to the rear of this train of Alexi Loma. He's got to say he's got to fend him off. <laughs> he's got to fend Yoni off first because he's... Yoni is not having that. He's like, right, really round the outside? No, I'm going to show you how it's done in a sec. But Paul's a fire, and Paul's 
Paul's a really talented driver. You can chuck him in anything and he's generally quick. So it's it's quite good to see him doing, driving quite well in this series. There's no damage on the cars. I haven't seen the car with damage. Well, there's, there's the other way to go. Oh, yeah, you had going to go very sideways there. Over the curb, I've had a kill Ben. This is what we've been talking about, these horrible curves. And this is why these guys are a little bit faster in race pace at the start than we saw them in qualifying. Because they can abuse those curves a lot more in the race. There's not as much to lose. But he only had him there. I think now he's, he doesn't have to stay in position for the time being. He had his opportunity if he got a good run that first lap to try and get past Paul Ilbring. And Ilbring actually getting a little bit sideways himself coming out of 30s. But Hagner's not giving up. And we've only got, what, less than five minutes to go. Um, and the only hang is actually a lot closer as they come down into Hawthorne once again. Yeah, he's um, he's tidied his driving up a little bit. I don't think they're going to catch the three in front, which is a shame because it would have been. A great, yeah, I think these guys would have made it a great five-way battle. Um, but you never know; anything can happen in our racing. You know, it could rain, could get fog, uh, could get inclement weather conditions. But who knows? Um, okay, moving on. Um, Norbert Kiss on that 17 car is still your race leader. He now has a 2.4 second gap over Rocker Barone. Um, we're keeping it with Yoni Hagner for the time being and Paul Lilburn. Let's see whether Hagner can do anything. He's a lot closer actually as he comes out of Clark Curb once again to complete lap number 18. This is just how many laps these guys does at this racetrack. He'll slow it down into turn number one. Will he get anything done? He gets a good run actually as Lilburn's going to go a little bit wide. Can he dance it down to the inside? He's not quite close enough there. Um, but Hagen is still trying, and this is interesting, um, because they're still losing time to Lani Oto and um, Alexia ahead of him. And Alexia alone has not actually been able to do anything right now. But Mamba Palomba, he's got to settle down into that seventh position in that Team GT car. He's not, actually, he's not that far. He's only a car length back. Was a car length back. He's now two car lengths back, sadly. But uh, I wouldn't count on Alexia out of this just yet. He's, mm, he's a hot lot help. Hot, hot lap specialist. <laughs> Everyone is gearbox, don't worry. He will be, and we've only got ourselves a handful of laps left to go in this race. Um, to give you an update as well, Andres Lynches has been able to pull out about an eight tenths of a second cushion right now over Dom Duhan, so it looks as though Dom won't get a top five finish in this race. He's going to be hugely disappointed in that in that red line number two car. Dave Geelink in that fourth position, kind of in no man's land for Ironex Racing. And um, we talked about this before we came on air. Um, Timo Evenen, um, who's not racing here today, Enzo Benito only jumped in at the last moment. He was the first to try of the day. Ironex Racing really aren't on form here at Rans Hatch. I think after their recent success in, a, in another televised thing that we did, um, that Timo let them all out when he shouldn't have done. They should have stayed in for practice. We all say about the cave that they put the Ironex racing drivers in or the basement. I think he's let them out for too long. And so they're not quite up to their tip-top condition that they have been. That's <laughs> my feelings anyway. 10-4, allegedly. Meanwhile, less than a minute and a half left to go on the play clock. As Alexia Loma going so sideways there, coming out of 30s. Field starting to spread out. Just to let you know, by the way, Glenn McGee um, is currently scored in the 20th position. And pretty much, if he can keep it going and stay in the lead lap, he will finish in that 20th position. Because Wolfgang Wartenhall has scored one lap down, as is the Yana Matakeum. Um, and Glenn McGee is a full, I don't know, about half a lap ahead right now of Wolfgang Wartenhall. So Glenn McGee right now will be starting this race from the first position in heat number two, if it all stays where it is. And I'm having a look, this is going to be the last lap of the race. Norby Kiss down into turn number two. But what will be his final time Dom. for Heat Sorry. 1? Sorry. Yeah, one more lap, Will. Um, get it right. And Dom Doohan has managed to catch um, or just Valencius as well. He has. I he's think, close up yeah, to big. He's right. Nice looking car, that red line car as well. Oh, he looks at the inside. Go on, round the outside. Oh, he can go around the outside but there. But the thing is, you go around the outside into turn two, then you have the inside line into Graham Hill Bend. Hold it for Graham Hill, go on the outside, of course, going to use that runoff area. Stick it onto the inside and 30s. There you are, job done. Let's see what exactly. Hans actually going to have a chance here, though. He's very close. Maybe he'll try it down the inside as they come down into Hawthorne so he gets a good run out of here. Yeah, it's all about getting the run. He has got a good exit. Um, oh, where he's looking. Down the outside. Oh, he's gone to the outside. It is that seems to be. Oh, he just flew past like he was. Wow. <laughs> that was. That was. That was 
That was I think he's one of these low downfall setups, actually. To be blatantly honest with you, but move Dom Duhan back into the fifth position. Andres Valencias with a lap and a half left to go as Kuzeba Volker Jr. He's also on the move as well as he's going side by side with Toby Azerni as they come down the apex racing car on the inside. Are they going to get it done? Yes, they just about are going to stay too wide. We've seen this in virtual TV. They're virtual going TV side before. by side. Sorry, they man. are indeed. And Volker Jr. is still on the outside line. He's going <laughs> to go wide, it. but they're still going to keep on going like that. Volker Jr. finally had to slot him behind. And Zerny in the 13th position. Volker Jr. in 14th right now. As it looks as though, actually. Cool, uh, cool. He's not giving up. Something happened there. That's last lap. Oh, he got a bit squirrely coming out into the last corner. So that's him sadly lost place. He didn't give it easy, though. Fair play to him. That was... Uh, some great driving by the pair of them because they could have easily ended up in the gravel. Oh yeah, some very clean, respectful heads up driving right now as Alexia Loma is on the move in that number 13 car. He's trying to close up to Rio, but remember Palumbo, will he get a good run as they come out of 30? So Norbert Kiss right now, just about three corners left to go for him. We're going to stick it with Alexia Loma. Can he get the run he needs as they come out of 30s? Yeah, they've got lap traffic ahead of them. Um, in fact, no, that's Andres Valencius and he's going very slowly right he's now. He's it's, coasting at home right now. He can't have turn, a fuel issue, can he? He might do, but let's turn our attention back to Norman Kiss. He'll come into Clark Kerr for the final time. And Oof. as he does so, he'll roll it down past start finish line. He will claim victory in heat number one. Rowing second and Christian Jim Jack in third. We're going to go right back to this battle. Valencius Palumbo and Alexia Loma. And Valencius might be very light on fuel. He's lost a lot of time these last couple of laps. In fact, he's lost about 10 seconds these last couple of laps. So let's see what happens as they come out of Clark Curve, what will be for the final time. Will Aloma be able to get past Lumbo? He's going to have a very last late drive oh, there. He's going to try not, to get to the outside. Not going to be enough, I don't think. Him. Not going to work. No. Not enough. Very close, though. A little slam on the end. He's trying to put the slowing down with Clara. Yeah. No way. Hey, there we are. Super Alexi. Um, it was one tenth of a second at the line. Just four tenths of a second separated those three drivers at the end of the race. I think Valencia's was light on fuel there, but still able to keep on that sixth position there. So a good showing there by him. Um, let's have a look, see where the rest of the car is coming past the start finish line. Anthony was Sully in 15th position, just coming past the stripe. He falls down into 16th, actually, losing a position to Rico Vard on the last wrap of the race. This one, Bala will come home in the 17th position. Martin Asher will come home in the 18th spot. Henry Voyer is just working himself down into Clark Curve for the final time. And then in the 20th position, just by staying on the lead lap, look at that bright green car of Glenn McGee. He will be start Glenn McKee even. He will be starting heat number two from pole position, Rob. Wow. He's not going to be nervous, is he? I'm I don't know who Glenn McGee is. I feel really bad. Can we get some background on him? <laughs> yeah. Who is quick, this guy? Who? <laughs> quick. Um, I'll tell you what. Um, Rob, you run through the final results, top 20. I'll go and find out a little bit about Glenn McKee. Excellent. So, your winner of Heat 1 was Norby Kiss with a great drive. Lit he won it by 1.6 seconds from a hard charging Rocco Baroni. Christian Shimzak in third. Dave Geelink fourth, just ahead of uh, Red Lines Dom Duan. Audrius Valentius in 6th, Amano Palumbo in 7th, just from Alexia Loma uh, to Pani Lineato. Paul Leobrink rounded out your top 10. Yoni Hagner um, 11th, Harold Michintala 12th, Tobias Cherney 13th, Volker Jr. in 14th, Riku Vajay in 15th, Anthony Roselli 16th, Istvan Bello in 17th, Martin Asher, Henry Virok and Glenn McGee would round out your top 20. There was some cracking races, and judging by the retirees, it looked like there was only three retirees, so that's astonishingly clean racing. Yeah, for a track, you guys. which normally you will have some big tracks exactly. on them. Um, I'm very impressed by the drivers here, actually. And this is what we said. It's a smaller field than what we see normally, but smaller field isn't necessarily a bad thing. And the fact that we had 22 guys finish this race... Um, just three retirees and very, very good racing. To give you an update on Glenn McGee, by the way, I think actually we have seen him before on Glacier TV. He was in, I think, in the 
Content Endurance Sportscast series, Jane will probably confirm this for me, um, that we streamed about a year ago. Um, he normally races a little bit more in the Mazdas and the Mustangs. John I Racing in 2011. He's had 49 wins on iRacing, and he drove quite a lot on the Skip Barbers and the Mazdas, but he'll be starting in the McLaren MB4 GT3 car at Brands Hatch in the first position for heat number two. All right, let's talk to some people. I want to talk to Dom. How you doing, Dom? Very good, Will. How, how's the Glacier team? The Glacier team are awesome. Um, hey, you came home fifth. What the hell happened? <laughs> Thanks for the vote of confidence, Will. Um, I used to be a contender, just so everybody knows that, and my ego gets bigger. Um, I, I had a good start. Really? <laughs> Sorry? I heard something just squeaking there. Um, oh, had a good, it's a radical good, uh, to ignore him. <laughs> that's fine. I had, a, I had a good start. That helps. And then uh, it was a case of uh, doing more laps than I've ever done without crashing before on this track, which was fantastic. I think it was my record was three. That made it for a full 22, is that? Uh, really good race. Um, I made a couple of errors and Audrius uh, got past me. Uh, and then uh, I tried to run quite close, but actually the dirty air, I don't know, the car felt a bit unbalanced. So I dropped back a bit and then decided to do a charge with the last kind of six minutes remaining. And uh, I think uh, managed to get past him. Then his uh, fuel was running low. So that took the pressure off my back, but uh, fantastic race. Indeed, a top five finish. We'll be starting heat number two all the way down on the depths of 16th position. Um, heat, heat one, I have to say, was surprisingly clean of these drivers. You did allude to, however, the dirty air, and it did seem like some drivers were having difficulties in passing after the first couple of laps. Um, just how bad were the tyres here as well with the dirty air? Well, actually, it was kind of midway during the race that you, you really start to feel it. Um, the front was... Um, obviously under braking there's there's a bit more understeer so you're trying to get as smooth as possible maybe brake a bit earlier carry the speed through the corner but then the uh, rear grip was starting to go and what i was finding was my the fronts were gripping a bit better i was going into the corner and getting quite a bit of oversteer on the fast corners which is something you don't really want so there was a uh, quite a li lot of uh, lobe like uh, rallying but uh yeah tires are always an issue here surprisingly not as bad in this car as others that and heat number two, can you charge way through the field? Where are you going to finish? You know, I would be um, really happy with anything top 10, to be honest, because I think it's going to be really difficult to overtake here. Uh, I think there's a lot of fast guys behind. There's going to be any incidents up front. It's going to just going to have a massive uh, you know, tailback. So it'd be interesting. And just before you go as well, I mean, we talked to you in, in Iceland and then you decided to go and put yourself on In Racing News as well on an article called, called Seeing Redline, um, which I've had a look through it myself. Um, you build yourself as world's, world's most successful um, virtual racing team. Um, Rob Cast laughed when I said it, but great article up on In, in Racing News. Um, talk us through yeah. that article a little bit. Well, do you know, I don't think we've ever been in it. And uh, it was, as I racing is one of our biggest uh, forms of uh, kind of competition, I thought it'd be really good if we kind of talk to the community through that. So, and give a bit of the history, because we've been around for a number of years. And, uh, you know, um, definitely, uh, definitely really good to, to get some of the crazy things that have happened in the past out. Um, well... We'll talk to you in heat number two. I have to say about that article as well. The only team I've ever seen made to get Gran Turismo and Sim Raceway into an article on iRacing. Congratulations on that one at least. Um, Dom Duhan, we'll talk to you after heat number two. Um, Super Alexi, your race was pretty entertaining. Yeah, it was. Um, come on, I I've had an interview now which lasts 12, um, 12 minutes. I know you can talk in full sentences. Um, so... Your race here today, you started in... I can't even see where you are on the timing. You started 21st on the grid. You finished this race in the end in 8th. Happy? Yeah, it was a decent one. Uh, well, yeah. It was quite fun. I had to pass some cars, so... I had to fight for some positions and so on. But uh, <laughs> in the end, I wanted to pass the Eraman. But... Get this man an ice cream, please. <laughs> Uh, well, Actually, I think it's beer fast. he needs. So after beer, he talks a lot more. <laughs> really? Okay. Yeah, he does. Oh, the videos, yeah, of course. <laughs> um, so for heat number two, you'll be starting in the 12th position. Knowing already that your car can pass other cars, 
You've got to be in pretty good speed, knowing that you've passed these guys once already. You've got to do it again now. Can you win Heat 2? Yes. There we are. Alexia Lava apparently is going to win Heat number 2. Now shove off. Go back to the finish channel. 10-4. Tell you what, the last <laughs> time I said that, I got into trouble afterwards. But hey, I'm going to step aside for a moment. We'll be right back.
Well, welcome back to Glacier TV and the second of today's heats in the Polar GT $1,000 Cup from Brands Hatch. Norby Kiss, the winner of heat number one. He'll be starting this race from the 20th position due to the 20 car inverted field. We're racing for 35 minutes in this the second heat of the day with a rolling star as well. Will Vincent, Yoni Backman and Rob Cuss in the booth. And of course, today's broadcasts are all in memory of Alan Simonson, who tragically lost his life um, at Le Mans just 24 hours ago. And Rob, while we were off there, we were talking about it. And it's one of those rare accidents when you thought everything was going to be okay, and really, it wasn't. Yeah, it was, I mean, obviously, you caught the end of it on the on the, the broadcast, and it's, it was like, oh, this is a big shunt, but with the GT, GT car, you expect the driver to just get out. And Sadly, he didn't, and it sucks a bit, really. Massively. I think massively is the correct answer there. And by the way, the results are up on your screen. They are from heat number one. We're going to go racing in heat number two in about four minutes' time. Um, and of course, um, for heat number two as well, we'll be continuing running a silent lap number three in memory of Simonson and all of the guys here today. I mean, I've been talking to a load of people here on iRacing, both in TeamSpeak, both in servers, and there's a sense of shock around this community, and it's that thing as well, Rob, you know, you might not watch GT Racing that much, um, the same way that when Weldon died in 2011, not many people watched IndyCar, but same with Simon Shelley and everyone, it filters through the motor racing community so quickly, and it really does make everyone reflect about just how dangerous motorsport is and how you know we cheer on our favorite guys week after week but there's that human element to it as well exactly it's, you know motorsport is dangerous you, you get that on all the tickets when you're in a circuit and it's we also lost you know um Lefner as well didn't we recently and uh wolf sivister lost his life at nurburgring as well yeah and i know a number of the nascar community guys and in fact, all of the over racing guys still in shock about Jason Leffler losing his life just a couple of weeks ago as well. So, a dark month for motorsports, but as always, motorsports will bounce back. That's the important thing. Safety will always improve. In fact, you know, motorsports makes road cars safer. We all know that. It will continue to do so. Motorsports continues to get safer. Unfortunately, days, weeks like this put a bit of a down on what we do. But as I always say, we always go racing for a reason. Very quickly, prize pool is up on your screen good prizes on offers when it's entering the second half of the season and that battle for the championship um provisional results indicate that norbicus has taken back the championship lead over dave geeling but that my next racing guy he's gonna have a lot to say in heat two i think it's not gonna let that slide not with their uh, recent form so i'm looking for sheer entertainment in this heat with uh, Dave Geeling kind of and I think. And we saw also Heat 1, very, very clean. Heat 2, rolling start. Um, myself and Yoni talked about this while you were stuck in a London Middleton train, as we're going to say. Um, <laughs> and, you know, Heat 2, the first two corners, very difficult. Importantly, however, the guys on the outside line, they can hold it together for the first two corners. They can then get the advantage in the next two corners. So it's going to be a very interesting start to this race, I think. Yeah, it's, it's basically who has the kahunas the size of Everest to stick it around the outside and stay there. Because it will work. It can work. It's been, you know, it's worked in other races. But, yeah, it wasn't London Midland. It was probably the Burger King that I may have had on the way home. <laughs> so we're going to run through your grid. <laughs> going to run through your grid very quickly for heat number two. Row number one, you're going to have Glenn McGee and Henry Voirek starting um, in first and second respectively. Martin Asher, Isman Balal, third and fourth. Antony Rosselli and Ricky Vage, fifth and sixth. Same with Volker Jr. Seventh, um, Toby Zerny in eighth. Howard Mitchell-Harler in ninth. And then Yoni Hagner rounds out your top ten. Paul Ulbrink, eleventh. Tapano Lanioto in twelfth. Alexia Loma in thirteenth. Mambo Palumbo in the fourteenth position. Adrius Valencius in the 15th position, Dom Duhan 16th, Dave Geeling 17th, Christian Schimbrack 18th, Rucker Barone 19th, Norby Gis winning heat number one, starts in 20th. 23 guys will start heat number two. There'll be no Enzo Benito, and it looks like there'll be no Chris Damon Jr. either for this the second heat. So those guys are done for the weekend. 
Rob, it takes you to the first part of this lap. So, as they all managed to find first gear, that's a good start to this event. Um, that's probably cruising in second, trying to save a little bit of fuel. Let's head down the hill and up to Druids. I've watched Rally Cross around this track from the inside of Druids, and they're mental. It's such a tight corner, but the speed they carry around it is ridiculous. Um, obviously, not going quite so quick at the moment, but uh, I think the key, <laughs> I think the first corner accident might not happen. I think it'd be right here where we are now on the track. Um, <laughs> and I think we'll see some cars skirt off into the gravel on the outside before the long run up the hill. I'll uh, pass it over to you because I need a drink of water. You need a drink of water, do you? Well, right now they are working themselves at some point in the racetrack, which I can't quite see because my timing is just gone down. Out of they turn are just going number up the hill. four, they're coming up the hill now, and this is, you know, that fastest part of the racetrack. Can you see the elevation change here as well, bro? This is the fun part about Grant's Hatch, you know. Silverson flat as a pancake, Grant's Hatch, that elevation being a natural amphitheatre when it was built. Beautiful racetrack. One of my favourites, sadly, not safe enough for uh, Grand Prix racing. Um, all the sports cars in the World Endurance Challenge can't go there because the runoffs aren't big enough. But these, this set of corners that they're doing right now is immense. It's in prototypes, and these guys, as I said earlier, it's just it's just a lift and a step in and over car sticks. Uh, and Dingle Dell is probably one of my favourite corners in motorsport because it's just blind. <laughs> You've just got to commit early and just hope. Winner for Heat 2, who's it going to be? Ooh, let me have a quick look at the grid. I am going to go for... It's going to be tough because it's some quick drivers. I'm going to go for Rosetti. He's and starting in 5th. Yeah, he's starting 5th and he's not a slouch. But he has got Asher and Balg. They're, they're good. We've seen them hold off people before. So I'll tell you what, though. Pace car is in, Glenn McGee will begin to pick up the pace pretty early actually. The green flag will be in hand any moment now. Phil bunched up nicely actually, Ballow on that outside line. Can he get going? Green lights on, here we go. Boogity boogity boys, let's go racing in Kent boys. <laughs> Indeed it is, and this is like Ballow. It's got a car, oh god this is going to be dangerous. There's Henry Boy up there, and there's a little bit of bumping as they come down turn one. Boy is going to go wide, they're going to be very close. They come down into turn number two for the first time. A little bit of bumping there. Uh, between this was um, oh, there's an accident. Was selling, oh, and there is that, an accident here. And is it a big one? Yeah, Dom doing. Um, there's four cars. Four cars. They're going though. They're still going. Mm, sideways. Dom, yeah, Duhan spun his car. He's been able to keep it going, however. Shim checks out. Himself, so going three wide, in, and there's a car actually. Yeah. And it's Christian Shimchak there, um, who it looks like he came diving down the inside there. I've heard about the last late breakers, he got really, he just took out almost half the field. Very lucky that he didn't cause a bigger incident, but right now let's have a look at the cars at the front of this field because you've got Martin Asher charging on the rear of Glenn McGee. Asman Ballard in third, Anton Maselli fourth, Henry Boyack has got a radical, I believe that's on the inside of him right now. He's got connection issues as well, he's blinking, he which I hope that doesn't cause any drama, he always have to race that. Um, and also Alexi Lowe is appearing to get in part of ourselves past Dom Duhan there, working ourselves a little bit further from the field. We've got a huge gap oh, of well, cars right now. Oh, Alexi's just got massively wide and lost, almost lost the spot back to Dom Duhan then. Duhan falls back in line, however, there's some damage to that um, that red lane car and he won't be going very quickly much further. But meanwhile, Paul Ilbrick and Toby Azzurni, they're going side by side and they come down into turn one. Who's going to get it? Paul Ilbrick! Three wide there, car off the track as well, that's Jeremy Hagner. Hagner is off the track, he's on, I think he just kept it out the wall there. Um, but Jeremy Hagner, difficult early on for him. And he was running pretty far up the field, he's falling pretty much to the end of that train. Disastrous there for Jeremy Hagner, as working ourselves on lap number two. Glenn McGee still leading the way. We've got an update on the Jeremy Hagner incident. Apparently there was quite a hot young lady in the crowd. Maybe flashing, but who knows. crash at turn four as well which involved going to Hagen we'll get an update on who those drivers are very very quickly but meanwhile Roselli is trying to charge on Isman Bala right now as they work themselves out of I believe that was Clearway's turn Westfield even turn six yep. they'll come down into Sheen Curve turn number seven 
and Falao is under a lot of pressure from um, Rosselli to be able to pull away from time being from Xavier Volker Jr. So much, in fact, a little bit of bump in there. Rosselli will go to the outside of that number 22, Batman Bill. He will be able to get himself on the outside. Will he get it done? We will step aside for a moment as we work ourselves onto lap number three. We'll be right back in about a minute and a half in memory of Alan Simonson. So welcome back and we're going to turn our attention immediately back to Dave Geeling because right now he's going side by side with Tuanla Lenioto. He'll be on the outside lines to come down into turn one. Will he get the job done? Lenioto's going to have to be careful on that inside line. But Geeling's going to get a better run off the corner here. And we've got big trouble there. Cars spun down. I believe that was Martin Asher. Uh, indeed it is in that 24 car. Lost it heavily there. He spun that car on the exit of turn one into the wall. He will be classified as out of the race. In fact, he's back knowing but some serious damage to his race car. He was running in the second position at the time when that happened. So to give a very quick update on the big guns, Norby Kiss currently running in the 12th position on the race track, trying to close down Dave Geelick, who is ahead of him. This is going to be important for the championship battle. Rocco Barone is in the 14th position right now on the race track as well. Um, he was obviously still, dead, um, still Glenn McGee, but meanwhile, oh, Anthony Vasselli, because they've called Junior, they've had a great battle the last half of yeah, but now, now they need to go, hang on a minute, all right, it's all well and good, you know, fighting over P2 and P3, but the trophy's down the road, in that green car, I don't want it, that's what they need to do, they need to just get after him, close that gap, make it a three car battle, for us. For the time being, um, Glenn McGee is pulling away, he has about, about a three and a half second gap, you see it on your screens there, that will come down pretty dramatically, however, because of the fact that his last lap was a 124.3. We expect these guys um, to slow down to about a 123.8, 23.9. Last time by Anthony Rosselli, a 124.645. Now this is exactly what you were saying. Rosselli and Volker Jr., if they start battling, two things will happen. First of all, Glenn McGee can pull away. Secondly, and this arguably is more important, the likes of Norby Kiss will be able to catch up. Dave Geeling will be able to um, um, close up. Zerny will be able to close up. Paul Lilbrink as well. These two, they should just get single file for the next three or four laps, try and close the gap to Glenn McGee, then make it a three-way fight up front so the guys can't catch them. Exactly. you got to use your, uh, you got to use your smarts. It's, you know, it's a 35-minute race. Um, it's all well and good having fun and racing, but sometimes you've just got to go in a minute. One minute, Ken, let's work as a pair. Let's get up, see if we make it and more fun towards the end and uh, go for the win. Gonna check in very quickly on the number 28 car of Tobias Zerny, who has got himself Dave Gillick right behind him. And in fact, you've got a great battle between Paul Ilbrink and Howard Mitchell. Ooh, That'll be just off Kiss your screen. Off. As Norby Kiss goes off the racetrack a little bit there, you say that. And this is where Norby Kiss needs to calm it down. We've seen this before. Norby Kiss can be very aggressive. He needs to pick off these cars one by one. It looks very easy for him. But in a track like this, you try and make a big move. We saw it in practice. Him and Yoni Hagner came together. Um, he puts him, his right wheels on the curb a little bit wrong. As the car just bounces in the air there. And he will literally fall to two car into them. Exactly. Notorious. Notorious Norby Kiss um, on the charge. Oh, he's just run wide. 
As Dave oh. Dealing's going to go down the inside. Paul Hilbert was able to make a move. I believe, no, he wasn't. He's still battling with Harold Mitch and Harlow. Will Dave Dealing try and do the cut oh, under oh, as they come oh, down oh. into surge? He's going to be very close. And they're all going defensive here. Dealing's got to be careful. If he doesn't get the fear he is, Norby Kisler is going to go down the inside of him. And then all of a sudden, you see this. It's oh, really look hard. at that. Dealing lost out big time there. He was trying to go around the outside. The car just literally went from the left of the racetrack to the right. What do you say? Hold your line. The other fast player to go past you. That cost Dave Geen the position. That potentially will cost Dave Geen the lead of the championship after this race. And he now has the Italian Rocco Barani right on his gearbox, basically. Well, the gearbox is actually in the middle of the car, so that's a big lie on his rear bumper. I'll try that. Spoiler. Might be a bit closer. No, spoiler? Yeah, no, spoiler. no, the spoiler's in the air. He's not kissing oh, the spoiler, is he? Up. Bumper. Um, anyway. I tell you what, like, Baroni has been very fast in this race. We saw that in heat number one. He's one of the fastest guys. Um, and he will try to close that gap over the next couple of laps. We've seen it in heat one, however, that after a while, these tyres start to fall away. And I think this is why Norby Kiss was being aggressive early, because he knew that. Dave Dean was struggling a little bit on pace. But if he can get past Keelan Curley, he might have struggled a little bit. I'm going to welcome Dom Duhan back into the booth. And Dom, we saw you incident down at turn number one. We saw a car streaming down the inside. You, unfortunately, the innocent bystander there. Yeah, and unfortunately, also, it was my teammate who was streaming down the inside. Um, Christian, I think he just uh, got caught out with um, everybody breaks early into a hairpin, and he got a bit of a wheel on the grass. And uh, yeah, unlucky. I just uh, got too too much damage and went into the pitch, tried to repair it. It was just uh, no, no go. So um, thanks, guys. Not, not. Not a great day to be a red line driver if you're the team boss and get wiped out by the <laughs> way you drop this. Uh, I'm going to find him. There's yeah, be a bottle yeah, of scotch or something, with, uh, surely. Well, only, he only drinks that during the race. Oh, okay. How about for you? Oh, you know I'm a drink. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Dom, are you going to stick around for a bit? I've got to go, actually. I've got to go and, uh, I've got to go and hide we'll in the corner somewhere. Yeah. Well, sod off. We'll talk to you next week. Is like, yeah. <laughs> see you in a little bit. Tom Duhan now, unfortunately, coming home in the 22nd oh, position. Oh, it's not the kiss that's coming out the outside. It's he's oh, and he doesn't make it. Oh, he's, he's all over him. He is. He's, he always bumped <laughs> off him down the front trailer. He will look oh. down to the inside as they come down in turn one. He's not going to be close enough, however. And he's trying to force Paul Dillman oh. into mistake in that 41 car. Ilbert doesn't often make mistakes, but look at the run. Ilbert kiss will go. He'll try and go down the inside. You see that Ilbert forcing him to the outside here. That only works if you can actually stay in front out of this corner because all of a sudden, gonna push that, wide. this will have the inside <laughs> line into Graham Hill Bend. This will give him the opportunity, of course, Ilbert will have the better run off the corner. He will just be able to clear him as they come out of, um, into 30, but ahead of them as well. Great passing going on the racetrack. Two wide they've been since the start of the lap between Rico Bard and finally Henry Voigt's able to get past him. Wow, this is going to be one hell of a motor race very shortly because there's eight cars battling for like loads of spots. And it's, it's everyone. It's, it's just action in front of you right now. If you, if you aren't doing anything right now, I know it's a Sunday evening, you should be having nice dinners, but you need to watch this. It's awesome. And this train starts with Ricky Varge in the fifth position. They have Henry Voigt, Howard Mitch and Harlow, Paul Ilbring, Norby Kiss involved in it as well as Ilbring. Oh, he's going to go sideways. And he will lose a ton of positions because that's like final line. Oto is going past him. He oh, drops safe. down into the 12th position there, costing him four positions in one corner. This allows Kiss up one more position. It allows Rocco Barone up a position. He's been able to get past Dave Geeling, incidentally, as well, which is pretty interesting. Because now Barone has got to try and close down Norby Kiss. He's trying to work himself through this traffic right now. It's Harold Mitchenhall in the next victim for Norby Kiss. He's so good in turn of one. Is Norby. And again, you see Mitchenhall is looking down to the inside. He's trying to be defensive. In a train like this, however, you've got to make sure you're taking one at a time. Exactly. He's got to pick his opponents, but he's not the most patient driver. <laughs> it comes to passing, so this is going to be entertaining, as, as always, uh, when Hobby's involved, so it must be, some, yeah, it's just going to be fun. I don't know what happened to Anthony said he, he was running P2, but he's now P3. Yeah, he's, he's lost out to Dave Vogt Jr. We saw Lucy having an amazing battle a little bit earlier on. That's it. And oh, Vogt Jr. is able obviously. to get past with Sally. Um, now Volker Jr. has closed that gap, it's less than 3 seconds now. And just have a look at the lap times, Glenn McGee last time by a 124.8, Volker Jr. a 124.3. Now this is not the page we're seeing in heat number 1, 
but still, Volker Jr. is eking out about half a second a lap over Glenn McGee. Now, the important thing here, Rob, that that actually means that, you know, Volker Jr. is not necessarily going to need to breeze past McGee. He's going to have to work for it. If he was doing a 123.8, I'd say, then it would be very easy for him. But being half a second faster isn't going to be worth that much. As we've seen already with Norby Kitt struggling to get past Richard Exactly, this is why you're the uh, lead commentator for Glacier TV, because you know what you're talking about, and I just make it up as I go along. Just thought I'd let you know I actually make it up as well as Mitch and I <laughs> going to get down the inside there of <laughs> Ricky Fudge, and this is going to put Norby Kiss on the outside. He's got to be careful, Norby. He's got to make sure oh, he's oh, stuck on the outside Geeling. line. Geeling, he just got hit by Bro Yeah. Yeah. So this is even worse now for Dave Geeling. What happened was, is that field bunched up together. Dave Geeling, I'm having a look, he tries to go down, swallow it down the inside there. And you have to say, and I, I always speculate about this thing, Rocket Brown turned into that corner pretty early. Um, I mean, I know Geeling came in late. You're going to have to call it a racing incident on paper, really. Geeling, last late breaker, tried to slide down the inside. Rocket Brown turned a little bit early. Those two are going to be fast way down the field. And Rocket Brown, I think he has got going again. He really is struggling now. I think that was uh, how. The, what the Prost Senna Suzuki Suzuki chicane move maybe? I think it's a little bit clean than that. Yeah, yeah. It, it was a racing incident. They're both good, both very good drivers. You know, they're, they're both super clean generally. So we'll put that one down to uh, lack of talent. As Paul Ilbrink touches the grass and goes sideways into a corner again, same <laughs> place. He lost all the positions. Yeah, so Dave Geeling is. No, no, it was struggling. AJ, sorry. That was Anthony Rosetti. Sorry, yeah. doing a teammate move here. Must and be he's falling thing. back. I'll tell you one thing we need to keep an eye out on, though the battle for the race lead. And it is now down to four tenths of a second between Glenn McGee and Xavier Volker Jr. as they work themselves down into Green Hill Ben once again. They're working themselves on lap number 11. We have 20 minutes left on the play clock, so surely. Volker Jr. has enough for the tank to at least have a couple of goes to get past Glenn McGee. He's got himself a three-second cushion over Anthony Roselli as well, with Roselli going a little bit wide. So this means that McGee now can just try and size up, um, so Volker Jr. can try and size up um, Glenn McGee. And of course, Volker Jr. is the official world record holder for this track. Uh, he looked down to the inside there, down into Hawthorne, wasn't able to get the job done, ran a little bit wide on the exit of the corner. We're trying to go on board, actually, as they work themselves out of Westfield, down Dingledale, into um, turn number seven on the race right now. And you have to say it's just a matter of time as we're on board. Um, Rob, just a matter of time until he finds a way past. Probably, he got a slowdown penalty there. He just got a yeah. slowdown penalty. Yeah. That's put him a second back, one and a half seconds back again. Volker Jr. has target acquired, but he's overdriving. Now he's got to slow his car down. and oh, It's easy to do. It's easy to take some of the apexes look super tight that occasion was too tight but I've been impressed with Glenn McGee's stature in this race I expected him to fall back a little bit quicker if I'm perfectly honest and he's proved me completely wrong he's just driving rounds without doing anything silly and letting people try to go around him and obviously making mistakes as is shown by Hawker Jr so he's not doing too bad for a he's green car He's not, indeed. i um, give you an update, by the way. Norby Kiss, we need to get himself past Ricky Barge. He's now into the sixth position in clean air as well. Henry Boyk in fifth is about three seconds ahead of him. Probably will be an easy target there for Norby Kiss. To give you an update on uh, Howard Mitchell as well, he's going down into the tenth position. Dave Geeling is running in sixteenth right now. Rocker Barone in fifteenth position. Rocker Barone trying to work on Yana Matakane in the battle for the fourteenth and fifteenth positions on the racetrack, actually, right now. Rocket Brown's going to get himself a better run as they come out of 30s. They'll run it down towards the whole front once again. Will he go down the inside? Easy pass there for Brown back up into the 13th position. But, uh, Anthony was telling you, he's kind of all over the place right now. His pass up was a 125.4. But this is what we talked about in Heat 1. Some of these guys can do some very fast laps when the tires just overheat a little bit. And uh, Rosselli has Bauhaus right behind him right now. <laughs> AJ's. A bit of an enigma when it comes to uh, driving cars. He's super fast, but sometimes he's, he, I don't know, he suffers from brain farts, I think. I think is the uh, the term I suffer from it as well. I can be brilliant round a track and then just, well, never brilliant, but I can be all right and then crash. I don't know, he can be super fast, but sometimes not, as he pulls a bit more of a gap there. And it's, it's a bit, I don't know. Meanwhile, strange. Um, 
It's going to turn our attention back to the race here because Volk Jr. is back to have another go as they work themselves through Surtees once again. And you have to give it to Glenn McGee. I mean, you have to say that that guy... I already have. He, yeah, that, I'm putting it to him right now. Oh, okay. Uh, I mean, he's driven a faultless race, not put a foot wrong. He's got Volker Jr. behind him. We know how good a driver Volker Jr. is. We know how good Rosselli is, Ballow is. Norby Kiss will come into play before the end of this race as well. Um, but McGee's just turning lap. He's not the fastest lap of the race or anything. His fastest lap of 124.008. It's actually what, you know, some of the slower laps of the race were for Norby Kiss after that fuel went off. Last time by for McGee, it was a 125.2. Volker Jr., 124.4. You have to say, it's just a matter of time now. Volker Jr. gets a much better run there out of Sterling's Bend. No slow down penalty for him out of Schinkler this time. So now, you're going to have to say, if you can get himself a good run through turn number one, Rob, this could be the pass for the race lead. It could well be. His, but Glenn McGee got a brilliant exit. And he managed to pull a little bit of a gap, just give him a bit of room where Volker Jr. is superior. This is He's it. on the brakes. Oh. No, he stays. He Ooh. keeps it. Oh. Three wide, meanwhile, in the battle for 7th, 8th, and ninth position, I believe, on the racetrack. It's Pani Lanioto, Ricky Burge, and Paul Ilbrink. Ilbrink's going to try and go back down the inside of the number one car of Ricky Vice. They come in. Will he get the job done? Yes, he will. Uh, so he'll move up in position. But Volker Jr., now this is going to be oh, fast the race lead. As Glenn McGee and Volker Jr. goes a little bit sideways there, so he won't make that No, there's cars happen. off. There's cars off. And who was it? It was Rico Varje just went off and Mitch Inala and Thomas Shenny of all oh no as oh, no Rico Varje just comes on and spunts Geelink um, just you know alright Dave how are you wallop have that sure, surely unintentional but a bit silly so yeah we'll get a replay of that up on the screen um, in just a moment's time we just want to keep it with the battle for the race for the time being because still Volker Jr he lost it that time really out of turn of one he tried to stick down the inside into turn three he wasn't able to do so and then coming out of turn four 30s he wasn't able to get the job done he got himself a little bit wide but now Volker Jr is as close as he's ever been that gap right now is about a tenth and a half as they come past the stripe once again 15 minutes left to go on the play clock down into turn number one Volker Jr's issue is actually is that he's having to slow too much in the corner he can't put a gap down down into Druid beautiful defensive driving there by McGee now Volker Jr his best bet is to try and get a good run out of Graham Hill Bend to make that move into 30s and just hope to keep it on the racetrack this time but I mean this is the whole thing is that Volker Jr he's not able to get himself past right now um, and as they come into 30s once again he's going to get a much better line this time Volker Jr but still he's close He'll have to go around the outside, I think. McGee's not going to give him the inside. Will Volker Jr. try and go around the inside? He's going to actually try and slow it down the inside at the very last minute. Battle for the race lead. Volker Jr. still can't get past. Some great driving by McGee. He's pleased making that big green McLaren even bigger. And he's... It's, oh, it's just... He's brilliant. He has a, He's under pressure. And it's a lot of pressure. I would have melted and been off in the grandstand by now. Um, and he's just soaking it up. He's like a big sponge, big green sponge. Volker Jr. gets and a much better run this time, however, out of Sterling. He's now going to have tried to look down to the inside, almost a little bit of contact there. As it came oh. to the curve, <laughs> very close race between these two drivers. Don't let it end in tears, boys. And now they'll complete lap number 15, 13 and a half minutes left on the clock. And this is the second of today's heats in Polo GT. This time, oh, Volker Jr. got a much better awesome. run. Surely awesome. he can go down the inside. He does it. He goes down the outside. He's going to try to pass on the outside. If he cut back, no, he won't be close enough. Oh, I didn't get it. I tell you what, right? Volker Jr. is driving brilliant as well because he could have run into the back of McGee a couple of times, and he hasn't. This is driving it at its best for all the you know the, the kids that like btcc racing and you think you have to rub to race you need to be watching this because this is an epic display of brilliant defensive driving and superb offensive driving by these two drivers this is gentleman racing at its very best right now um and volker jr is going to get the run now because glenn mcgee puts his first one wrong no he doesn't volker jr he's not great on the brakes right now and I tell you what, this is going to allow Anthony Rosselli to start closing in very soon because 
McGee, 125.4 last time, 125.6 for Volker Jr. Compare that to Anthony Rosselli, who did a 1 minute 24.9, closed about half a second that last time by. But still, McGee in that 19 car carries on going, still in the race lead for here. We would have thought that Volker Jr. would have been passed easily, but Volker Jr. is all over this. And don't forget right now, Rob, those tyres are going to be getting ever so slippery as you see him having to overcorrect there out of Clark Curve that last time. Exactly, and to all those you know, sponsors that might be out there and that might want to get involved in sim racing, look at the air time you could get on these cars with two great drivers. Yeah, I tell you what though, this is a beautiful display of driving at its very best here. Glenn McGee, because April Volker Jr., we're going to stick it with it because this really is a battle for the ages here between two kind of underdogs here as well. I mean, Volker Jr., he holds, he holds the lap record here, but he's kind of been overshadowed a little bit in the Polo GT $1,000 Cup. Um, Glenn McGee, however, I would say, um, we talked about him before in the Continental Endurance Sports Car Series, but not ever really in McLaren's, and he's still holding his own, and it's still going absolutely perfectly for him. Volker Jr., um, he's that kind of driver as well. He won't fight down the inside and force an incident. He would, he's just trying to find a gap right now. He's had a couple of opportunities he's not been able to capitalise on, but he's as close as he's ever been here. He's not going to look down to the inside and Sterling. Surely not. No. No, he didn't. Um, he's, he's using every bit of the track and a little bit more, um, which is great. This is he's awesome. Awesome racing. I could watch this all day. I say we will get ourselves a replay of that four car incident. We're just scared that as soon as that happened, we're going to get a pass to the race lead. I'm going to show a replay of that and something else will happen. The typical Glacier TV highlight reel will be afterwards. But Volker Jr., oh, he's going to get a run down to the inside. He will go. He doesn't work on the brakes. No, he, he look, he's late. He's later braking going into Paddock Hill Bend, right, and gets a brilliant run. But then. It's all, as you say, he doesn't want to run into him. You know, he's showing him maybe a little bit too, too much respect because he could have gone up the inside, you know. And it, the good thing with McGee, he's going to actually double his championship points if he stays where he is. <laughs> Meanwhile, um, Paul Ulbring has been working on Spinal and Neoto. They've been going very close racing the last couple of laps. This allowed Alexi Lomas to close up. Also, Rocco Barone has closed up to uh, Andreas Valencius as well as they battle for ninth and 10th position on the right track. Um, Paul Ulbrich going to look down to the inside as they come down into Hawthorne's bend. Will he get the job done? Don't run that curve too much, Paul, but he will move up position. Getting past the panel of the so the recovery continues now for Paul Ulbrich. Not be kiss is number 41 car. Well, not sorry to interrupt. He is not up kiss to He's five seconds yeah, behind. He's, he's not. He's right on AJ. AJ's boot lid. No, he's and five seconds behind the leader right now. Yeah, and closing it lap by lap. Yeah, they both Kidd closing. has a chance to win this, this is race. crazy. How long's left? We've got nine minutes left to go. So that's six laps in reality. Here comes Norby. Oh, and he's just going to just stick it there and say, yeah, oh, well, you turn in. Yeah. Well, Rover Sully will get a good run out the corner there, but he's not going to stick it down the inside with Sully. He probably will be happy with fourth position on the racetrack for the time being. Unfortunately, however, yeah. Norby Kiss is 4.3 seconds behind Glenn McGee. Last time by, Kiss did a 1 minute 23.978. Glenn McGee, a 1 minute 24.5. So McGee's getting faster, actually, than he's been previously in this race. Um, Volker Jr. is stuck behind him. It's going to be very, very close because Norby Kiss is only going to be able to take out about half a second a lap if, and I say if, McGee can keep it going as Alexia Loma has a crash and he's going to fall right down the standings. Is not so super as his car is fishtailing, yep. pirouetting, going off into barriers, can't even drive in a straight line. Valeski, put your cape in your handbag and leave the building. Meanwhile, we're going to get ourselves a replay of that four car incident. And Rob, that was just brutal there, what happened. Yeah, that was a bit crazy. It was just carnage. Cars going off everywhere. And, you know, just check out the countryside and madness. But, you know, race one was clean. And, I mean, race two's been pretty clean. It's just the accidents have just been big, sadly. And that's the issue with a narrow track. One driver puts a little bit foot wrong, and that will be what happens. Volker Jr.'s got the best one he's ever caught. Battle for the race lead. Will Volker nah, Jr. That's it. That's down the lead, inside? Surely. Yes, he will, and he will get the job done. So move Volker Jr. up into the race lead. Gen McGee 
finally comes down into the second position. Norby Kisilov is still charging, Oof. and he's only 2.5 seconds behind this battle. I'm a little bit sad for Glenn McGee right now, because I think he deserves to win it. He's been driving brilliant, but I'll tell you what, Volker Jr. is flying. But notorious Norby Kiss has got them both in his sights. <laughs> Knowing what he drives like, we're in for some... Uh, some hot lapping demonstration is about but, to commence. By the way, um, we do apologise. We we expect the Super to go to replay and get a change for Aisley. That is what happened. Uh, it was down into Druids there, and Volker Jr. just got himself a perfect run out of Panakil Ben, just as he's supposed to. He's going to make a pass into turn two. Got himself down the entire McGee. He was like, okay, you've worked hard for it. You might as well have the position. I'm going to defend it, but I'm not going to be brutal about it. Glenn McGee down into second. Volker Jr. is starting to put away. Norby Kiss right now, only 1.2 seconds behind Glenn McGee on the racetrack. And this is about obviously second and third position on the racetrack. Still all to play for, right? And we've got five laps left to go. <sighs> it's going to be a barnstormers. Oh, that's, that's uh, Glenn McGee's first massive mistake, really, as he went all kinds of gravel tracking. As, and that allows Norby to catch up and smell blood. And so... Norby for P2, sadly, I think. No, it's a Norby, but Glenn McGee is brilliantly, and I'd quite like to see him finish P2, but I don't think that's going to happen. I think it's going to be very close. The issue is Norby, he is so good through for, um, turn number one. We saw that was the issue, though, with Volker Jr. He was good through turn number one. He just, it's single file through the actual apex of the corner. They both had to slow down, and McGee is very good at getting onto the power. We always know, however, that it's always the car in front that's going to be the car that gets into power. Just that tiny bit ahead. Um, and that is what I think the issue might be for Norby Kiss as well. Getting word on our ear, Dave Ginnon trying to work on Toby Zoni in the battle for the 13th, 12th, and 13th, 14th position right now. Ginnon got a bit of a recovery drive. He's going to be really disappointed with today, though, because he's fallen down the standings and he's not going to be leading the championship coming out of this, um, out of this race now. No, and just alluding to the fact that you were saying about Norby Kiss and that, the difference between the two, Norby Kiss will track the car off the inside. No hesitation, he will throw it there, and so I'd expect a big move from Norby in the next two laps as they come up to uh, traffic. And this is the thing, in the dirty air half, Norby Kiss isn't as far, I mean, it's a 124.6 last time. And let's not forget, Norby hasn't had to run in, in dirty air the entire first race. Heat number two, uh, I mean, he's a lot closer to McGee than he was last lap. Let's not take anything away from that. But 124.6, he's got to find a way past Glenn McGee next lap at the very latest. Otherwise, it's Volker Jr.'s race to lose. This is when you talk from. I'm pressing the wrong button, that's why I'm not talking. Sorry. <laughs> I can't help some people, can you? Going to have anyway. a look at Tapano and Yoto very quickly, though, as well. And Yoto goes sideways on the racetrack. And we're going to get, uh, I'll tell you what, good battling between himself and Barone. Barone will complete that pass, however, moving himself up into the seventh Ooh. position on the racetrack ahead of them, actually. But Lani Yoto, um, yeah, behind me, but Lani Yoto I think the gig got slowed down. McGee got slowed, slowed he down did. Norby Kiss to P2. He did that, and this was out again. The same place, actually, that Volker Jr. got it. Turn number seven. And these cars, they take a lot of curve there. I mean, you're talking about a tyre whip between getting a slowdown penalty or be able to keep it going. McGee, it was an easy pass in the end for Norby Kiss. But now we've got ourselves a grandstand finish. We have, indeed. And with Yoni Hagner between the two cars. He moves out the way. Oh no, that's the one. Yeah, Yarmouth my... came very quickly. My been stuff looking is on the outside right of Islam Bala wasn't able to get the job done, however. So he falls back into line, battle for the 11th and 12th positions on the race track. Burn and and Yarmouth Kayan. Oh, he might get a good run actually out of this corner. So he works himself down as Druid to close that gap back up. Well, we know how good a defensive driver Islam Bala is. In fact, we know how good an all round driver Islam Bala is in that number 22 Batman car. Um, and these battling is safe at 11th and 12th position on the racetrack right now. Before it all changes once again, Volker Jr. is your race leader. Two and a half seconds is the gap to himself and a charging Norby Kiss. Glenn McGee in third, Anthony Rosselli fourth, Henry Voigt in the fifth position, Paul Ilbrink sixth, Rocco Barain seventh, 
and Juan Laniotto in eighth, Andreas Valencius in ninth, Harold Mitchell Harlow. They are your top ten. We have two and a half minutes left on the play clock. Volker Jr. right now is working himself into, um, into Clark Curve once again. So we've got two laps of this race left to go. And there will be Kiss as they come past the track. Let's see what the times are. He's 1.7 seconds back. He's taken out eight times from a second lap last time, but he needs to be a second a lap faster. Not quite close enough there for Norby Kiss, but he's going to be damn close coming into this race. Yep. Uh, Volker Jr. did go a little bit wide, but he didn't slow down. He just had a little bit of slide there. That's another 10. Norby could be in it. I don't know. Is Volker Jr. feeling the pressure? Can he feel the heat from Norby Kiss? He's had a couple of little slides. See if he can get. It's all about driving clean. That's all he has to do. If he drives clean, Norby won't get there. I'll tell you what, actually, over him. the team radio, they've just loaded up a Queen and David Bowie song. They're playing it on repeat. Um, but to David Volker Jr., in the race lead, jerking himself fast on lap traffic. This is actually helping out if Norby Kiss um, will have to find a way past in this tricky middle section of the race track. The gap right now between these two drivers is 1.2 seconds on the race track. Norby Kiss will have to get past the driver right now. He will get out of the way there. The gap increased by about a tenth up last time because Norby Kiss was unable to get himself the drive he needed. Um, and we're going to go on board with Norby Kiss actually as we begin what will be the final lap of the race. But you yeah, have to say, what a charge. 20th to second. Norby Kiss looking to come the first guys go back to back in Polar GT, um, winning both heats. He's going to be one step away from doing so. Gap at the line, one second. Can he do it? No. Sorry, that was my Scandinavian answer. Um, he can now, because Volker Jr. just went massively wide. Oh, this could... Oh, and he's gone wide again. He's, he's gone losing. very wide, actually. He's that cracking time. under the pressure. He's like a boiled egg that's been dropped and it's just cracking everywhere. But, of course, let's not forget, catching is one thing, passing is another. Norby Kiss, that gap stays at a second. Norby Kiss is now on that dirty air. We talked earlier on about how Norby Kiss's car hasn't liked dirty air that much. Half a lap left to go in this race. Volker Jr. has an eight-tenth of a second gap right now as they work themselves. The gap will close Squeaky a little bit. Time. We'll see whether or not Norby Kiss has got a draft advantage. No, he hasn't. Seven-tenths as they work themselves out of fourth one, down into Westfield Bend once again. The battle for the race lead is going to be less than a second, one of the closest finishes we've had in heat two history here on Glacier TV. They're working themselves out of turn number seven, down to Sterling for the final time. Norby Kiss will oh. have to hope for mistakes now, but you see that Volker Jr. is still all over the place. A better run there from Sterling. Oh, Volker yeah, Jr. He's now he's has got this. He's one got more it. corner to go. One more corner to go for Volker Jr. If he can do that, he does that nicely. He will come out of clearways there, out of Clark Curve, and he will win heat number two here of the Polar GT $1,000 Cup. Norby Kiss there, a valiant drive. Second place is him. And Glenn oh. McGee on the last lap of the race, after what was an absolutely tremendous drive for him, uh, he ran out of fuel. Oh, well. That, that means that's such a shame. That is massive, massive shame because he was driving so well to, you know, he, he led the race for ages. He just, he just drove super well. It's, you know, that's that sucks. But it happens. We've seen it happen to other drivers. As and that's well. the thing as well. He started on pole. If we, with his own pace, maybe he would have been able to, you know, put away a little bit more, save a bit of fuel. Um, but it's a risk you take sometimes when you know you have a big chance to make up some big positions. McGee. Maybe that extra, you know, couple of pounds of fuel in the tank might have been a different play. Because Volker Jr. might be able to get past a little bit quicker. But to run through your race results from heat number two, we'll do that in, I don't know, about 20 seconds time. Because the last driver on the lead lap, that is Yamari in that number three car. He's going to work himself past the start-finish line. We'll come home in the 16th position. I say the last car on the lead lap. So now we can go to the... Um, Results and Clint Volker Jr. there in a time of 35 minutes 21 seconds takes home race victory. Norby Kiss just six one tenths of a second back after 35 minutes worth of racing. Anthony Rosselli 10 seconds back in third. Henry Voyak fourth. Um, Tapano Laniote fifth. A good finish there by him. Andres Valencius in sixth. Harold Mitchell Harder seventh. Rocco Barone recovered to eighth. 
after an incident earlier on in this race. Paul Lilbring, he's had an up and down day. He finished ninth. The Arnold K in top ten for him. Um, 11th is Isfan Balau. 12th is Toby Cerny. 13th, Dave Geeling. 14th, Ricky Vaj. 15th, the Amari. 16th is Glenn McGee. The last um, first car scored one lap down. And then you have Wolfgang Wildenhall scored in the 17th position. 18th, Yoni Hagner. 19th position, you have Alexia Loma. Martin Asher, Amanda Palumbo, Dom Duhan, Christian Jimjack, all out of the race. Rob, talk to me. What a drive from Norby Kiss. Where did that come from? We know he's quick, but that was ridiculous. He just yeah. sighed through traffic like a hot knife through butter. I and think for Norby, there was two or three incidents throughout that race that really helped him. There was that time when the cars went pretty much free wide. You had the time when he was able to take advantage of going down the inside of a couple of cars, and it was very easy for him. And then he got himself into clean air. Norbikis, clean air, it's a game changer. And Norbikis, very, very lucky there. Um, and getting himself into second position. And that's the best combined result we've seen in um, Pro GT history. So congratulations there, Norbikis. Able to get it done two heats in a row, and that will move him to the championship lead after this race. Pretty impressive showing by him. Yanama Takean, how was your race? Better than the first one. That's a good start. Yeah, from 22nd place to 10th is okay. How are you going to celebrate your 10th place? I'm not. Good man. Only top ten will be celebration. But you <laughs> top, top five, top, top five, top five. <laughs> there we are. We just stitched Liano live on Glacier TV. <laughs> so Brilliant. we'll see you in two weeks' time, Yana. I'm guessing. Congratulations, yep. a good finish. Well done, buddy. Yep. Thanks. Uh, who else want to talk to? Oh, there's so many radicals here. I'll tell you what, Rob, I need to go um, to the gentleman's room. You go and talk to your radical boys for a minute. Okay. Well done, AJ. You finished third. How did you pull that off? Uh, well, I barely pulled it off. Only got lucky when uh, Glenn ran out of fuel. Luck or mistake. You make your own luck in motor racing. All you had to do was put an extra pound in. Yeah, he, he drove wicked. Um, you, you were catching and then you kind of fell back. What? Talk us through that, because you were on his, you know, you were catching the leaders, and then next thing we know, you were getting overtaken for a podium spot. And it's like, well, oh, what happened there? I barely had enough fuel to finish too, so. Uh... Ah, talk to your race technician, and you know, maybe pay the fuel guy a little bit more to put some more in for next race. Yeah, but uh, the setup in the beginning was um, very understeer compared to the last race, so. I was struggling a bit with that. Ah, uh, okay. Cool. Nevertheless, I know it was a little bit lucky, and I, I, I feel sorry for Glenn a little bit because he, he did drive brilliantly. But it's a podium, which is pretty good. You've got to be happy with that. Yeah, first one of the series for me, so hopefully we can get a few more. Onwards and upwards. How was your race, Mr. Ulbrink? Uh, onwards, downwards. Bit up and down for you today. You've involved in scuffles everywhere. Does your paintwork all right on your car, or is it slightly scraped? Uh, I, th I think it uh, needs some work. Yeah, the uh, we've put the bill in the post you already. That one's not covered by the insurance, sadly. Oh, nice. No, but it, it was a <laughs> two good races, and I had a lot of fun. But uh, just made a couple of mistakes myself, so nothing. No one else to blame. So that's good. Yeah, you always manage to get yourself in the th thick of the action. You're an entertaining driver to watch. I was saying to the guys, you pretty, we can ch pretty much chuck you in anything and you can wheel it around a track. So it's good to see you compete in all the different series to a high level as well. So that's that's good. I mean, top 10 is still decent. It's good championship points. So uh, well done. Yeah, thanks. Has Will returned? I have. Will. I have. I even washed my hands. Lies. Lies. Um, unfortunately, I think that's pretty much all we're going to have time for, because no one else wants to talk to us. Um, Hagner! Hagner's oh, here. Hagner! How you doing, buddy? Hello. Uh, fine. How was your race? Cheers. Well, first one <laughs> was boring, and I crashed it myself on the second one, so... 
Yeah, take us through what happened in heat number two. It looks like a pretty weird incident. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, in the turn one, I uh, run wide, like a very wide, just uh, uh, almost tap at the wall, uh, lose at about 10 places. Then I uh, was uh, challenging Yarno to that turn, and uh, Armando just uh, spin net in front, and uh, nothing can do. So, out here today, however, two weeks' time, we reset it all again, we do it all over again. It's kind of an up and down season. You're hoping for, I'm guessing, a better second half to it, however. Yeah, well, I hope that, uh, well, I will finish the races uh, with uh, almost a clean car. <laughs> so, nothing big. Okay. Almost a clean car. That's, Almost a uh, clean car, I like that idea. Yes, yeah, it's, in, it's an interesting uh, tactic, that one. Surely you want to finish with a clean car and no dents, because then you don't have to pay out for your racing. Yeah, just want to have fun in the race. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you do look like you have fun in each race. You're, all, <laughs> you're, you're like Paul, you're always in the thick of it. You're, your car's going, you know, all sorts of sideways in places, and you're always, you know, making moves it's good to watch you, you guys make it really fun to watch so it is actually oh okay give me your final thoughts rob uh we actually have tobias Cherney in he's joined us oh hello how you doing buddy okay Cherney. is, it, is that right this? yeah have i guys. pronounced it correctly uh Cherney. oh Cherney. yes <laughs> good boy you, Will. that's all right i'm famous for having people's <laughs> names messed up uh, yeah, it's but, a difficult name. So um, your race today have been incredibly interesting. Actually, um, I'm having a look. Let's see where you came in today's races. Heat number two. You came home in 12th position, and you came home in 12th position in heat number one. Consistency. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, concerning the result, yes, but um, I had major situations or accidents both of both races. So. Not that happy about the result. Um, not happy about the results, but still two top, I mean, top 20 finishes is the first point that everyone looks for. The small field here today, I'm guessing it's more about damage limitation than anything, because um, uh, I don't know, Road America, we have more drivers. You know, incidents like we've had seen today, they kind of really damage your championship charge a lot more, don't they? Yeah. I was, uh, I was glad that it was such a small field, so that it's so much traffic on the track and it was i would say everybody was driving very clean and fair and i had great battles unfortunately uh got caught up in crazy uh, or random situations well in two weeks time we're going to do it all over again um top tens is that going to be your target um yeah i will <laughs> Well, my, my first target is to go top 20 in the first race and then uh, see what I can do in the second. Um, I don't know how it will uh, go out. Well, um next race, uh, I've never driven there with a GT car, so it will be very interesting. Scary. That's what I'm going to say, but good luck! <laughs> uh, it can't be as scary at this uh, race where I went too wide uh, through turn one with Dave Geeling. Um, that's Maybe several play. times. <laughs> we saw three, three and four wide, so yeah, two, two wide's all right. Uh, I fine. think if you have a look at the Glacier TV photo, actually, it's about six wide that we went at the start of the race. <laughs> there you, there you <laughs> go, we're good. You know, yeah, two, but two then you're a little bit play. slower, so it's not that. <laughs> <laughs> True story. Um, but good race. Good luck. We'll see you at Sebring in two weeks' time. Rob, Sebring, it's going to be hellacious. Two different track services. A long track. One of the driver's most famous tracks. And also, you've got that fantastic final corner, which really promotes overtaking. It's a brilliant track. I love driving Sebring. And it's, you can, oh, there's so many places. To drive. It's going to be mayhem. There's so many places you can overtake. You've got the last corner. If you've got the balls, you can, you can even make a move into the first corner by taking a slightly wider line and cutting back underneath, which actually sets you up. If you can go through the right-handed kink into a hard braking zone to take the inside, through that section, you've got the hairpin at the end of the long straight. There's going to be, you know, there's going to be cars out breaking themselves. There's going to be cars going up the inside there. And you've got that next little section that flicks left. Oh, and there's another opportunity down the inside to the right. 
Will, you can overtake pretty much every two corners at Sebring. It's going to be yeah. awesome. It's one of the true driver's tracks. Um, of course, we head over to our Glacier TV YouTube channel. That's www.youtube.com forward slash Glacier TV Archive. Um, not only can you give us some of those YouTube monies, but you can also watch our Glacier TV anniversary race. Um, it was absolutely fabulous to see. Um, and I think we'll be looking for the same thing in two weeks' time here on Glacier TV. And of course, now that is unfortunately all we do have time for here today. Um, and of course, this race has been dedicated to the memory of Alan Simonson. And, you know, there are times in life when incidents, accidents happen. And the racing community, they always seem to come together. Um, be it, you know, a driver from a series that you've grown up passionate loving. Or something that you just read in the news. Every time the motorsports community always comes together. We always see it in iRacing. We always see it in sim racing around the world. And, Alan... As far as I'm concerned, you've always been a great, great GT driver, and you will be sorely missed by all of us here at Glacier TV. Godspeed. We'll see you next time.